Hello guys, this is Commando Doggo. In today's Starbase video we're going to be doing a complete beginner's guide into building your first basic ship. Uh, so basically just all the essentials, this is quite a long one. It doesn't actually take this long to make a ship, it's just because I'm going to be explaining everything in detail throughout the video. So first off, in Starbase you have your easy build hall. I'm going to assume you've played for a few hours already, but you have your easy build hall and um, that's like Lego building, but that's not very good because it is quite buggy as the making of this video and you, you do tend to experience bugs and losing your ships and it's also very limited as well you can't do as much as you can in a ship design workshop and that's what we're going to be doing in this video we're going to be designing our first ship in the ship design workshop now the ship design workshop has no limits so you can build anything you want and it isn't a simple lego uh, builder like a lot of creation games you have complete free control point and click exactly what you want to make you can make very interesting and crazy contraptions once you get good at it so that's what we're going to do so if we land here we have to go to the panel and you'll find these panels and this is where you can spawn your ships that you've already made i have a lot because i've already made loads and then you can start editing here and we will go into the designer and starts our first ship. Okay, so we are in the designer. So first off, we have all our tabs on the bot on the top. We can deselect these by left clicking on them. These are all the toolbars that are on your screen. And what we want open, follow as I do, we want the asset browser open. That's where you get all the parts in the game to build your ship. We want the toolbox open. That's where we select our tools and we want tool options bottom right here and we want the undo system this is just so we can see what we've undone I'll show you that later it's not important and we have properties so we have the properties menu which will show the properties of the objects that we select Scene view, we don't need scene view. Okay, deselect that. Okay, so that's all the, all the things that we need to open to make our first basic ship. We can use the WAST keys to move our camera. So WAST to move around. We can hold the shift button as we're doing that to move a bit faster. And we can hold the right click as we're doing that to drag our camera so we can change direction. So shift, WAST keys, and hold the right click and move your mouse to move the camera around. Next up we need a beam structure. So just like building a house in Starbase you need a beam structure that your ship rests on. So that's like the main support pillars of the ship and a ship isn't recognized as a ship unless it has a beam structure. Okay so we're gonna go to the beams folder, we left click, left click, straight beams, and then we're going to left click on any one of these beams here. I'll take the 192 centimeter. left click on that. Now we have the beam selected as you can see. We can use the mouse wheel to bring that in and out, forwards and backwards. Right click again to change the camera as we're holding it. Left click to place the beam. So now we've placed the beam here. Right click to deselect the beam. Okay. We can left click on this beam and press the delete key to delete it. You can also undo an action with CRTLZ. So I just press CRTLZ, I've just undid that. Now the beam is back. I'm going to delete it again. Okay, so we'll select the beam and we use the Z, X, Y and Z keys to turn it around. Like that. Okay. So we're going to place a beam, left click. Now we've placed a beam. We're going to make a simple rectangular beam shape here. So I'm going to use the X, Y, Z keys to place more beams. And as you can see, when we place our beams, as soon as we get close, it automatically snaps to the beam like that. So it automatically snaps. And the reason it does that is this tool right here. This is a transform auto snap tool. It should be on by default. You can leave that on. And what that does is it automatically snaps objects together when they're close. So I'll just do that again. So if I place another beam here, it will automatically snap 
thanks to this tool. We can turn it off to make much more intriguing shapes with much more finer degrees of change like here. We have complete free control in the Starbase Designer unlike a lot of other games. You don't have to snap everything like Lego, but we will get to that later. For now, we'll leave that tool on and we'll build a basic shape. Okay, so in our toolbox, left click on the select tool again, we're going to make our box like this. You can build any shape you want, just try and have a decent amount of space like I do here. Okay, so this isn't snapping right, I'm going to select the move tool and I'm going to move the object by holding left click and we can move an object. So when the move tool is selected, we can deselect by left clicking anywhere, select any object, left click, and this is the move tool. We can move an object. If we grab one of these arrows, it will move straightly that way. If we grab this up arrow, it will move straight up and down. We move the right arrow, it moves right. And if we grab the center square, we just kind of have free transform control in all directions. So I'm going to drag this over here and I'm going to place it here. Okay, so we have a box now. Next up, we're going to extend this box. I'm going to select more beams. You know what, we'll make this a bit longer. I'll select the highest length beam, the 384 centimeters. Use our mouse wheel. And I'm going to place it on all four corners here. I'll speed this tutorial up now because I assume you know how to do all this movement now. And okay, so now we've extended the box. Now instead of placing all the beams manually again to make the other side of the box, the rectangle, we can just copy paste this. So if we left click, we hold the shift key and left click on more items, we can select them all together. And then we can copy with CRTL C and then we can deselect that by left clicking anywhere and we can paste what we copied earlier with CRTL V. So there we go, we've pasted our beams and we can drag this to the other side. There we go, we have a, a rectangle. Whoops, I deselected the beams and I placed it wrong. What do I do? Well, I can undo the last action with CRTL Z. Well, now I'm selecting it again. I can drag this into place. That's better. Okay, we have a rectangular box. Another way to copy is also to select our beams with left click, shift again. And what we can do to copy straight from the position is hold shift and just drag one of the arrows and hold the left mouse button as we're holding shift. And we can drag a copy straight from the selected object. Same goes for the up key. If we hold shift and hold the left mouse button and drag the arrow. Again, we can drag straight from the position a copy of what's selected. Okay, I'm just going to left click, drag and delete everything I just placed there. Okay, so now we have a basic box, box shape. Now that we've built our box, we want to try the durability tool here in our toolbox. The spanner icon, left click on that. This will highlight any object selected when we left click on it. It's highlighted the object with the durability tool. Now what the durability tool tells us is if there's anything wrong with any part of the ship once it's built. And, uh, and right now the durability tool is just selecting a single beam at a time because right now these beams are not welded together and they just count as single shapes. So right now they'll just break apart because they're not actually welded together. In order to weld our ship together, our beams together, I'm going to deselect it by left clicking on what we just selected. Go back to our select tool. When you finish the durability, you can always go back to the select tool. And uh, we have a welding tool here. So we're going to weld our beams together. We left click on a welding tool. Make sure the weld beams is ticked. And then we're going to tick apply to all. And then we're going to left click anywhere. And what that will do is that will weld all the beams together. So now they are one shape. And you need to do that to uh, make your ship supports, you need to weld all the beams together. So now if we go back to our durability tool, we left click on that, and we left click on any one of these beams, it will select the whole thing. 
because they are all welded together. They are one shape now. Now they click anywhere, it'll be off. If I left click on any one of the beams again, it's one shape. So that's what you need to do. All your beams need to be welded together once you've finished placing your beams. Okay, so the next step we need to do is we need to add a thruster. We need a hard point and a thruster. This will make it count as a ship. In Starbase, nothing counts as a ship unless it has a uh, welded beam shape, uh, a welded beam structure, and it has a thruster attached. Okay, a thruster to move. So how do we build a thruster? We go onto our folders, and we go into the hardpoint folder. We select device hardpoint. In Starbase, almost every device needs a hardpoint to connect to. Okay, so now we have a hardpoint selected, same as before when we're placing beams. With the auto snap tool, it should snap it automatically to, the, to our beams. We're just going to put it here. And if we use the X, Y, Z keys as well to turn it around, you can see the other side has these plug holes. That's used to plug power into the hard point. We'll get to that later. Right now, we want it facing this way. And we want to place it on the back of our ship. So now that we've done that, Let's place a few more of these. I'm going to place another one on the bottom, another one here, and another one here, on all four corners of the back of my ship. And these will be where the thrusters go to move the ship forward later. So this isn't stuck together. As you can see, if we select our durability tool again and we left click, we're just selecting that. But if we select the frame, then we select the whole frame because this isn't actually attached to this. Now you might think, oh, we just have to weld it together. Nope, that's just for beams. For anything other than beams, any other object, you need to use bolts. Bolts are like nails, you know, they bolt things together. So we select the bolts tool with the left click, and we can left click to add bolts to our object. Let's add four bolts six bolts spread out like this. So now we've added six bolts and we've bolted this hard point to the beams. So if we use our durability tool again and we left click on the hard point here, look it's part of the beams now. It's part of the same object because we bolted it onto it. So we use the bolt tool to bolt any objects together that isn't welded uh, a welded beam frame. Only beams get welded together. Everything else needs to be bolted on with the bolt tool. Okay, I'll undo that with CLT and SID. We don't need that many. Okay, also, if we go back to our select tool, the left click on this hard point, this one isn't attached, as you can see. It's not attached. We can also use the auto bolt tool. The auto bolt tool will automatically try to bolt the selected objects. Okay. So if we left click on the auto bolt tool and then we left click anywhere with the selected object, the selected hard point, it automatically attempted to bolt it to the, uh, the frame here with the correct amount of bolts. So it put three bolts in automatically by just left clicking the auto bolt tool. So now this is also part of the frame. We can do the same for the other two. I'll left click, I'll shift left click on that so we have both selected. Select the auto bolt tool, left click, it automatically bolted it to the frame. So if we check the durability tool, it's part of the same thing. So uh, the auto bolt tool is good for beginners, however it does make mistakes, it's not very good. I think you should get used to manually bolting and putting a few extra bolts in whatever it is that you do, because sometimes the auto bolt tool doesn't do a very good job and places bolts in the wrong places or just doesn't place enough bolts, or places too many bolts. So try and get used to manually pacing bolts yourself in the future. But for now, because we're just getting started, you can use the auto bolt tool. Okay, so now everything is stuck together. Okay, so next we need to add a thruster. So we have hard points. Hard points are used to connect any device. Most devices use these. And now we're going to add a thruster onto the hard point. So if we press maneuver thruster, we type in maneuver here, maneuver thruster should come up here. Yes, we will we'll take a tier one maneuver thruster. 
It's the smallest thruster in the game to move a ship. We're going to left click on that. Now we have a thruster selected. We're going to snap it onto the hard point. Let's put one on each. Left click, left click, left click. Now we can just left click, hold shift to select all the objects that we just placed. And we can use the auto bolt tool to automatically bolt them on. So now we have thrusters and hard points bolted to the beam frame. Now if we use our durability tool, we left click. It looks different now, doesn't it? It's highlighted green, it says strength class 139. That's because Starbase now recognizes this as a ship because it has a, a solid beam frame that's welded together and it has a hard point on top of the beams with a thruster on the beam. So the only way to, for Starbase to recognize it as a ship is it has to have a hard point that's bolted to a beam with a thruster on the hard point. That is the basis of a ship in Starbase. There's so much more to it, but that's just the basics, okay? So we deselect that. So in order for a ship to work in Starbase, we need several different things. We need power, we need heat dissipation, like radiators and things, because uh, generators tend to overheat. And uh, yeah, there are heat mechanics in Starbase, so everything, every part of machinery generates heat. And we need to dissipate that heat using radiators and heat sinks, a bit like real life machinery, okay? And uh, yeah, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna select all the parts that we need. In our asset browser, first thing we need, we also need fuel as well. So we need fuel, we need electricity, and we need a seat to move the ship and levers to move the ship. We're going to get around to all these things, okay? So first off, we're just going to lay out all the things that we need. I'm going to go into my asset folder and I'm going to find, go into the machinery. I'm going to go into power. And I'm going to find a generator, a generator unit tier one. We're going to place a generator. So this produces power for our ship. Every ship needs electricity to run, obviously. Okay, so we can select that, left click. We can hold the shift, drag from the arrow to create a copy. Or you can CRTLV, then CRTLV, create a copy. So now we've got three generators. Now generators can neatly line up like this. You can also have them come out to the sides. All right, they fit together like Lego. Okay. So now we have three generators. We're going to left click, drag, select all the generators. Now we're going to use the auto bolt tool, left click, left click again. Now we have automatically bolted the generators together. As you can see, the bolts are going through each other. We check the durability tool, it's one object. Okay, so next we need a fuel chamber. Okay, so generators run off fuel in order to produce electricity. Okay, so to do that, we need a generator fuel chamber tier one, and generally you want to keep the same, uh, keep stick to the same tiers. So if you've got tier one generators, you want a tier one fuel chamber. If you've got tier two generators, you want tier two generators. Okay, so we're going for tier one because we're just starting out. Now we have a fuel chamber. This is facing the wrong way, so I'm going to press the Y key to turn it around. This is where how it should be facing, and this will connect directly onto the generator like Lego. So it's made of a fuel chamber, one fuel chamber, and three generators. Each fuel chamber can only run a maximum of three generators. It can run less or a maximum of three. Okay, and we're going to select it again, and we're going to press the auto bolt, auto bolt it. So we have a fuel chamber, but we've got no fuel in the chamber. So we need a fuel rod to produce fuel for this chamber. So we go here, tier 1 generator fuel rod, we select that, and we can place that in the fuel chamber. The fuel rods don't need to be bolted, they fit in, no bolting needed or welding or anything like that. Okay, so now this has fuel. Okay, so that's our generator unit, it's a fuel chamber and three generators that will produce power for our ship. Okay, we can always take one off, or have two or one, but each fuel chamber can only have a maximum of three generators per fuel chamber, and that's what we've got now, okay? If you want even more power on your ship later, you can always 
have multiple fuel chambers and multiple generator setups like this. But we don't need that, we're just starting. Okay, so that's done. Next up, we need propellants. So not only does the ship need electricity and fuel from the fuel chamber, it also needs a thing called propellant, which is fuel for the thrusters. I know it's all a lot to take in, but once you've done this a few times, it will be easy, trust me. Okay, so next up, we're going to get type in propellant. As you can see here, when we typed in prop for propellant, we've got these pre-made modules already for us. So we can just select propellant tag small, left click on that. It's already done for us. Left click. Okay, we've got ourselves a propellant tank. Propellant tank is made from two things. It's made from a small hydrogen tank in the center and the small propellant tank support. Each propellant tank needs at least one support, so we can plug it in. Okay, now we're going to select it and we're going to auto bolt. So now it's all bolted together, it's one object. This will provide fuel for our, our thrusters so we can move. So we've got electricity and we've got fuel for the electricity and the generators. And now we have fuel for the thrusters so the ship can move. So every ship uses two types of fuel, it uses propellant and it uses the fuel rods for the generators to produce electricity. Next up we need a radiator. So a radiator is going to dissipate heat. So generators in Starbase, they have realistic mechanics, heat mechanics, where they generate heat. And if they overheat, they shut themselves off and restart. Uh, so you don't, And if you've got no radiators or you've got no way of dissipating that heat, they will just constantly keep recharging and restarting because they keep overheating. So just like in real life, things overheat. Machinery overheats. You need to dissipate that heat. Uh, generators also produce more heat the tightly packed they are together. So if we have lots of generators stuck together like this, they produce more heat than normal because they're very tightly packed. Every adjacent generator makes it uh, produce more heat. So this middle generator here produces more heat than these two because it's surrounded by two generators. Okay, so next up we're going to find a radiator. Here is a radiator base. We're going to select that. And as you can see from the back of it, this fits onto a hard point. Okay, so we're going to place that, left click. And as you can see from the back, just like most devices in Starbase, it has to sit on a hard point. So we're going to get a hard point. Remember, hard points device hard point, select that. We're going to put that underneath the generator, like this. So now if we put that on the ship and we plug it in, this will work. This is a radiator. It will dissipate heat. So we can have more heat produced on the ship. If we need more radiators, we can add a radiator extension onto the side here. We can select all and we can auto bolt it. So this doesn't always auto bolt correctly. Let's try the other side. Like so. Oh, there we go. So now we have a radiator and a radiator extension. A radiator extension dissipates more heat from the ship. But we don't just need a radiator to get rid of heat. We also need a heat sink. If we type in a heat sink here, we have three different types of heat sinks. They all do the same thing. They're just different shapes. And what they do is they store heat and they transfer the stored heat to the radiator. So the way heat works in Starbase is everything produces heat, all machinery, all weapons, all generators. <coughs> it all produces heat. And to stop your things from overheating, your machinery from overheating, as you can see, heat production, that's how much heat this produces, you need to have the equivalence of radiators and heat sinks. The heat sinks will take away the heat immediately and store it, and it will also dissipate a small amount, but it will 
majority of the work that the heat sink will do is it will transfer all that stored heat to the radiator and then the radiator will dissipate that heat, it will get rid of that heat. So every ship needs to have heat sinks and the same amount of radiators as heat sinks roughly. And what that will do is that will get rid of the stored heat so none of your parts, your generators, your weapons, none of them overheat and shut down or restart because you can dissipate the heat. Okay, before we go any further, we're going to save what we've done so far. So we're going to go up here onto File and then Save and Save As. And I'm going to call this Basic Basic Ship 2 because I've already started the first one. And then once you've made your file name, press Enter on the keyboard. And now it will start saving your blueprint. See here? Saved. So now we have a checkpoint and we can go to file, we can open, and we can open our save that we just made. There we go, we just opened the blueprint that we just saved. So, you know, make checkpoints and save your files regularly so you don't lose it. Okay, and one more thing. The generator needs socket boards so it can pass the power. Right now there's, there's no way of passing the power that it generates. So we're going to go into machinery, power, and we're going to find the generator socket board. And this will pass electricity to other devices. Again, you can fit this anywhere. You can put it on the fuel chamber, you can put it on generators. You know what, let's put it on the left here, attach that, remember auto bolt, that's bolted on now, and we also need a pipe socket board, so this is to transfer heat coolant, so we can cool the generators off with the radiators and everything else. We're going to put this on, auto bolt that, so now the generator is complete, we have a a way of transferring the power and the heat. Okay, so next up, we're going to show, I'm going to show you how to save a module. So, if we move, if we select any part of this, let's say, and we try and move it around, that's going to mess up the object because we didn't select it properly. We didn't select the bolts. The bolts have disappeared. That's not a good way to move objects around. So we're going to CRTL Z to undo what we just did. Instead, we're going to hold the left click and drag our entire object that includes all the bolts. And we're going to go up here to create module. Okay, we're going to left click on that. What that does is it turns it into one object that we can select in the editor. So if I left click off this object, it created this green dot now. It's a module. It's a custom module that we've created. All I have to do to move this entire object, bolts included, it's left click on this green dot now because now it's a module it's all one module okay I can move this around and everything will move together if we don't want this to be a module anymore we can select the green dot again and we can press detach now it's no longer one object and you can select everything normal but we want it to be one object so it's easier to move around so I'm gonna hold drag create module so that's one object we can still select individual parts, but if we want to select the whole thing, we just have to left click on the green dot here, on the module that we created. We're going to do the same for this as well, so we don't have to redo the bolts and everything, we're just going to select that. It's already a module here, but we'll just select it again, we'll detach, and then create it again. So now it's definitely all selected and it's all one module, we can just select the green dot move everything around including all the bolts and parts. Also if we want to save our modules that we created we can select our created module and we can press save module here. Once we've done that we will open up this tab and we can type in the name of our module that we want to say. Let's say gen 1 setup and then we can press save module I'm not going to do it because I, I don't need this. And once you've saved the module, 
when you go onto your left tab here, you go into the module section and then my module designs, the saved module that you made will appear in here somewhere. So I have loads of modules because I've saved plenty, but yours should be pretty empty and have nothing here, except for that one module that you just saved. Uh, also to note is you can only have a maximum of about this many modules before it starts overwriting, overwriting old modules when you save new ones. So that's just a handy tool to use if you want to save any complicated modules that you built yourself. You can also just make a separate blueprint file and just throw all your modules into that file as well. Okay, on to the next part, let's start making a ship. Okay, so we're going to select this, we're going to drag it in. We're going to f f squeeze it in the ship somewhere. Hmm, let's put it here. You know what, let's flip it around. I think I'm going to have to make this longer, this ship. Okay, so we're going to take this back out. And we're going to extend our ship. So let's make some more beams. Let's place some more beams here. Extend our ship a bit longer. A better frame structure. Okay, so you can make any shape you want. <clears throat> I've just made a rectangle like this. Okay, so now we're going to fit this in. Also, I'm going to have more beams here. Generally, you want to have at least a few beams supporting your ship so it's not so easy to fall apart and break. And remember, once we've played, placed more beams, we have to go to the weld tool, left click, and we have to weld all the beams, apply to all. Okay, that's all one object now. Now we're going to drag our bits that we just made, we're going to drag the generator. <clears throat> I put that in here. Let's put it right in the middle, right in the middle like here. Now what we can do is, we can just select our module that we made and we can just auto bolt this. And now that it's auto bolted, it's bolted itself to the floor of the ship. If it doesn't fit in your ship for some reason, you can manually bolt it to the ship as well. You can just manually bolt it all together. You know what, I don't think we need three generators. I think two is enough, so we will delete the pack generator, select that and press delete. <clears throat> Next up, we're going to put our propellant tank, so our fuel for the thrusters. We're going to store this in the ship as well. Let's put that in the back here. The snap tool is being a bit annoying with us. It doesn't want to put it on in the center. See what I mean? The snap tool is being a bit annoying. So we're going to turn the, snap, the auto snap tool off here and we're just going to manually drag it ourselves to get the perfect position. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it roughly in the center here. Okay, I'll turn that tool back on. And we shall auto-bolt this as well. But would you look at that? I can't auto-bolt it. Okay, I'll have to manually bolt this to the floor myself. Two bolts on either side should do the trick. We're just going to bolt it to the beam. Add an extra bolt in here as well. Okay, we manually bolted that on ourselves and we manually moved that onto the ship ourselves. So now we have a propellant tank, we have a generator unit to make electricity and fuel. Okay, so we have a propellant tank and we have a generator set up here. Next, we want to plug it all together with cables and pipes because right now they're not connected in any way. Now we're going to do all of this before we bother with any of the heat mechanics because I want to show you what happens when you overheat something. So we'll leave the heat sink and the radiator till last. We'll plug that in last. Right now we'll just plug this all together. So if we go to our toolbox and we go to cables and pipes, that's what, and we click on that, we can select on these two checkboxes here, 
whether we want to place cables or we want to place pipes. Cables is what we place to connect electricity. So any electricity, any device that uses electricity will need a cable plugged on the same network. And the same goes for pipe. Pipe transfers ammo and cooling and propellant. So we need to have both of these going throughout, running throughout the ship so everything is connected. So here we have a generator socket board and this connects electricity. So we need a cable going into this. You see these? Just like on the hard points, we have these slots. We can put a, place a cable and left click. And I'm just going to run a cable very roughly by keep left clicking. If it's red, that means you can't place there because it's too far away. You need to place it in parts. So I'm just going to keep left clicking. I'm going to run a cable all across this beam here. I'm going to connect one cable into here. So this cable has now connected into the propellant tank and it's highlighted green. You can see it's blinking green. I'm going to run this cable further. I'm going to connect it into here as well, into the back of the hard point. And we can run cables all over. So I will speed this up. I'm going to run cables into every hard point that we've placed and every device that we've placed. Okay, so we've got cables going into every device here. Now we can test our ship at any time by going to the top here and pressing the test mode. If I left click on the test mode, it just opens another instance like this. So in a test mode, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, you can destroy everything that you've just made. So I can get my pickaxe here and I can just chop away at it, break it. Nothing matters because in the test mode, this is just a separate instance um, just to test your ship that you're currently working on. Uh, the only thing that gets affected in the real game is your inventory. So if you use anything that's in your inventory while in the test mode, like I, sh I shoot my gun here, I will actually run out of ammo in the real world, so try not to use your inventory in a test mode. But you can do anything you want. I can break my ship. I can do anything I want in a test mode. It's safe to do so. Uh, it's just for testing the ship, and when I'm finished testing, I can press ESQ and exit the test mode. And we're back to normal. So this is how we test our ships. We will be entering the test mode frequently to test things out. So let's enter the test mode one more time. So now that I am testing the ship, if I press U on any object, we can open our universal tool. Our universal tool reads the state of devices and it checks if they're powered or not. So because we plugged our cables into our devices here, we can see there's stuff going on here because it's connected. So that means the power is working, it's connected. If we press U and then we face uh, one of our generator units and we press U again to open our universe tool, we can see all these values that the generator is producing. It's producing heat, it's producing electricity, it's ramping up over time, its unit rate. As you can see here, the generator unit rate, that's the rate it produces electricity, it should go to 100. But it keeps resetting before it even gets to 10. The reason it keeps resetting before it even gets to 10% of the generator power is because we haven't connected any pipes, we don't have any radiators, and we don't have any heat sinks. And that's what I was talking about earlier when I said that the generators overheat, is they can't produce much electricity and they keep resetting because we don't have any way of dissipating the heat. We don't have a radiator plugged in and we don't have a heat sink plugged in yet. Okay, so if something isn't plugged in, so let's say I destroy this cable that's linking all our back thrusters here. So I'm just going to destroy the cable. That cable's destroyed now, you can see that. Now if I go here to the hard point, when something isn't powered, if you check your universal tool, there's nothing going on here. As you can see, there's no activity. That's what happens when there's no power and you've got no electricity connected to your devices. There should be nothing happening 
on the left here, in the data section. So that's how we check if our objects are powered, if they're working. We go into the test mode, we open our universal tool, and we check if there's activity on the left in the data section. If there's no activity, like now, that means the connection has been broken, or there is no connection going towards it. Okay, so now we've got a brief overview of the electricity. And we're going to go out to the other side here. And because you see here, we have the generator pipe socket board that's connected to the generator. This is where our pipes go. So pipes, the pipes connection will cool the generator once we have radiators and heat sinks in. And the pipe connection also transfers ammo later when we have weapons. And the pipe also transfers propellant from this propellant tank here. So we connected the propellant tank to the pipe. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll also transfer a propellant, which is our fuel, for our thrusters. So we need to have a pipe coming from our propellant tank, our fuel tank. Whoops, oh, CRTLZ don't do that. From the propellant tank, we need pipe going into the back of the hard point for the thrusters, because the thrusters use propellant, the fuel, and the fuel gets transferred through the yellow pipe. So for the hard points of thrusters, we need to have both a wire cable and a propellant cable, a, um, a yellow pipe, because thrusters use both. So we're just going to quickly do that. I'm just going to connect. These are WSD keys. Let's move the camera around. Left click, left click, left click. Connect all the hard points. both pipes and cable. Okay, so now would you look at that? We have a cable connected from the generator socket board, that's for power, generated by the generator. That will power all our objects that need power through this cable. And because thrusters need both power and they need propellant, we have cables going into them and we also have a pipe from the pipe generator pipe socket board which transfers our propellant from the propellant tank into the thrusters and this pipe is also going into the generator um, to transfer coolant into the generators but we don't have coolant yet so the pipe going to the generators doesn't do anything at the moment but the pipe from the propellant tank will fuel give us fuel for the thrusters so all you need to know you don't need to know all these details it's, it's a lot to know is that pretty much every device, almost every device, requires a pipe connection and a cable connection. Uh, not every device, but most devices do. Um, like there are small devices that just like lasers and things and um, laser sights in the future that we'll get to eventually that just require power and a cable and no pipe is needed. But most devices, all we need to know is require a cable and a pipe. Uh, from the ship's network. Okay, and just to show you how how it's the ship is now kind of working, if we go into our test mode again, we open our universal tool on our thruster, and we left click on the thruster state, uh, on the value on the right of that. After we've left click, we... Uh, yes, make sure you hold the tab and you keep the tab held down as well. Uh, we backspace, and I'll just type in 50, let go of the tab, go to the universal tool, and look, it's moving. It's actually moving. So that means that this whole setup is working, and as you can see here, the propellant tank is red. And, and as you can see in the universal tool, the container stored resource is actually going down. So that's actually working. Propellant is going into the thruster through the pipe. The thruster is working. It's pushing the ship forward very slowly, and uh, that's working. And just to give you an example, if I uh, if I cut the connection, let's say I cut the pipe connection. We'll keep the power connection, but I'll just cut the pipe connection here. So now there's no pipe. The thrust is not working anymore. It's stopped. But it still has power though. But the pipe connection that was just coming from over there, from the propellant tank, I just cut that. 
So that's why thrusters need both propellant and a cable connection. They need power and pipe. Okay, so on to the next part. We're going to add a seat next. A seat and some controls. And we're going to have another maneuver thruster here on the left and the right, on the top and the down. So we have like a little rectangular ship that can move left, right, up, down. Okay, so I just exit the test mode. Now I'll probably just put the chair on top of here. Yeah. Oh, and before we move forward, I just want to show you this as well. Um, pipes and cables are very messy. You don't want your whole ship being overrun with pipes and cables. So I'm going to show you what ducts are. Ducts, if we go here, devices on the left, networking, we can find ducts. You can also just type it in on search. Just type in ducts, you get your ducts. So what are ducts? These ducts, these strips of metal here, they are ducts. And what they do is, they're very handy. They transfer both cables and pipes. So if I place a duct here, um, let's grab the longest duct that we have. Yeah, we're just going to place a couple of these ducts down. Okay, we're going to place two ducts there, we're going to place two ducts here, and we're going to right click to deselect, get rid of that. Now I'm going to hold, uh, left click, shift, hold the shift down to select all of these ducts. And ducts are physical objects that get bolted to the ship, just like everything else. So I'm going to select the auto bolt, now have them selected, left click, auto bolt them, two bolts per duct. Okay, so now the docks are connected, as you can see. So what do ducts do? Ducts, they transfer both cables and pipes. So if we connect a cable here, so this cable going in back into the uh, thruster here, if we use our cable tool and we just put a cable on top of this duct here, okay, and we just put uh, a pipe on top of this duct here, so the pipe and cable are going out from here, to the duct. This duct will transfer both cable and pipes all the way across here, all across the line of ducts. So if we put a device here on the other side of this duct, like let's say we, we put a thruster here, I'll just do that quickly. I'll copy paste this thruster and we just place the thruster here. This is a bit random. I'm going to delete this for later. You don't have to copy me. I'm just going to paste the thruster here. Okay, just really quickly. And if we just go to the other side of the duct that we placed, and we just make a cable and pipe come out of here. So cable and pipe goes in, cable and pipe goes out to this thruster. If we check, this thruster is powered. So the duct transfers across. So that's just a cool little thing to do that will save you lots of cables and pipes in the future because cables and pipes are very messy, you don't want them running around your whole ship. Uh, additionally, they also use up your building budget because you have a max building budget. You can, you can build very big ships in this game, but uh, you have a max budget of cables and pipes and these do use quite a bit. So try and use ducts if you can to keep your ship building neater and to transfer both cables and pipes easier. Okay, so this works great. So that's how ducts work, they transfer both cables and pipes. Okay, we're going to get a delete what we just did here. And I'm going to delete all this that we just made. We can keep the ducts because they're in a good place. Okay, so next up. So if we go into devices and controls, there we have our seats, our pilot chair that we need to, to pilot the ship. And we have, and we're going to place the pilot chair facing forward like this. <clears throat> and a pilot chair needs to have a pilot stand. Okay, so a pilot stand, chair stand, sorry. So if we look for pilot chair stand, here we are. This will fit, it will snap directly onto your chair so that they go together. Before we go any further, we're going to dra uh, select and we're going to auto bolt the uh, the stand to the chair. 
sometimes it doesn't really bolt correctly. Uh, and this is actually a bug with the chair and the stand. I know it's annoying to be experiencing a bug this early, um, but we can't really bolt it together properly sometimes. To fix that, what we can do is we can go to our welding tool and we can select a small weld block. Weld blocks are just little blocks that glue things together. A bit like uh, bolts, but they don't use bolts, they're just, just glue blocks basically, they just glue things. So I'm just going to glue this chair stand to the chair. So we've placed a few of these weld blocks that just glue anything together. They also glue beams together too. And now we've glued the chair to the chair stand. Okay, and that will let us add bolts for some reason. So that's just a bit of a bug. Sometimes you can't bolt the chair stand to the chair unless you put some weld blocks onto it. Okay, I'm just going to left click, create a module. So now it's all one object. We don't have to stick that all together again. Okay, so I'm going to drag this. And I'm going to put this chair on top of our little ship here. So now we have a little pilot seat. We're going to try and bolt it to the uh, to the ship. Okay, it didn't really bolt it to the ship. That's okay. We'll do it ourselves. I'll just get a beam. I'm just going to place a beam directly underneath the chair so it's got something to bolt to. And just a few extra beams here. I'm going to go to a weld tool, go back to weld beams, apply to all. And if we bolt the auto bolt tool again, now it's bolting to the floor there. So we have a chair bolted onto a ship. Okay, so next up we're going to add some controls to our chair. So there's a few different ways we can add controls. Um, it doesn't have to be connected to the chair, but if we go to Devices, Controls, there are several ways that we can add controls. There are these little plug things we can have on the ship, which we can then attach one of these two, and this will give us controls, but we're not going to do that because that's a bit complicated. For now, I'm just going to show you the easiest way to add controls to our seat, and that is a pilot chair control table. So if we get a pilot chair control table, we should be able to snap this onto our chair like here, this angle. You should yeah, see that? It snaps directly onto our pilot chair. So it's just a simple controls, pre-built control thing. We're going to select our chair and our pilot thing and we're just going to auto bolt and now it's bolted on through the snail here. If we check our durability tool we can see that the durability is 4.1 and we can increase that durability by just adding a few more bolts into it. See I just added another bolt now it's 5.7. So generally the durability tool um, gives us a number of how strongly connected parts are and the durability tool will always show the weakest link on the ship which is now 5.7 which is that thing we just attached. What you need to know really about the durability is that it should be over 1. If it's under 1 then your ship's not going to work properly and it's just going to fall apart. Ideally you want your durability of your ship to be over 1.5 maybe 2 to be safe for all ships that you make. You want it to be at least close to two. And if something is low on durability, it's not connected properly, when you have your durability tool and you left click anywhere, it will give you a number of this part. It will show in a yellow box if there's a problem. And you can increase the durability by just adding more bolts in the right places. As you can see, I increased the durability to 6.2 now of this part. Okay, so now we have a chair stand and we have a control table attached to the chair. Okay, so next up, now that we have a control thing, we're going to add buttons, levers, all that stuff that we need. 
and uh, just monitor panels so we can monitor things on our ship like the heat and electricity production things like that okay so these little spaces here these little square spaces we can uh, fit things onto them so for instance we can have a text panel we can snap that on that will display text it's the wrong way around I'll just move it rotate it with Y turn it around until I get it right there we go that's the right way around we can have a text panel on here let's just auto bolt it we can display text on this if we go into the properties panel value we can change it from zero to hello there we go we've just written some text on here or we can have let's see here a progress bar we, that's what we want we want a progress bar let's go for the 20 times 48 progress bar so a nice big progress bar we're going to snap that on like so again it's the wrong way around silly me so rotate that there we go we've got a progress bar so what we're going to write on this progress bar here hmm uh, if we want this progress bar to read our generator unit rates, so we're going to see what percentage of power our generators are generating. If we go to our generator here, we left click on any one of the generators, and we go to generator unit rate. So unit rate is the percentage of power that it's producing. It has a max percentage of 100 of how much power a generator can produce. Now if we left click, drag over this, and we see our TLC, we copy the text of generator unit rate. We can do this with any value, by the way, on any device. And now we go into the panel value, and we change the panel value. So we select it, all of it, and then we press CRTLV. I just pasted the, uh, the previous text I had selected, the generator unit rate, and I just pasted that over panel value. I will left click anywhere. Now it's changed to generator unit rate. Okay, it suddenly started reading 100, but you can ignore all of that, that's just bugginess. Okay, so yeah, I almost forgot. Make sure you auto bolt the panel. If you don't bolt it to the to the control setup, it won't work. So make sure it's bolted on. Okay, so now, now we have the same name as the generator unit rates. And what the generator unit rate is, that's the percentage of power that the generators are powering. And generally, uh, generators they slowly they start on one percent power and they slowly ramp up to a hundred percent power over time once they're turned on. Uh, you can change this later with buttons and devices and things, or automate it even. But for now, we'll just I'll just show you how it works. So if I go into the test mode, it starts at zero. One, two, three, four. That's the generators. The generators are slowly powering up. And the progress bar that we just made is reading that. It's reading our generator percentage. It should go all the way to 100% and that's when the generators were producing the most power. So it's slowly building up the generators. Still slowly generating up. If we check the generators here with our universal tool, as you can see it's reading the same generator unit rate 37 38 39 so basically our progress bar we just copy pasted generator unit rate value here and it's reading the value that's in there on our progress bar and we can do that with any device any device you have that has a name and a value we can just copy paste the name onto a progress bar and then that progress bar will read it the same value as that device. And as you can see, it's, keep, it's gone to zero, and it keeps going back to zero. Now why is that happening? And that's because the generators are overheating. Because as I explained before, uh, because we don't have a heatsink or a radiator yet plugged in, the generators are overheating once they produce a certain amount of power, because they produce more heat the more power they produce as well. So the generators can't be can't even use a tenth of their capacity because they've got no way to dissipate all that heat that's building up. So we're going to put a radiator and a heat sink onto our generators so they don't keep restarting and shutting down from overheating here.
Uh, and don't forget, also, on our progress bar, uh, we want to make sure that the max panel value, that's the max value that the bar can show, we want to make sure that's also the same as the max value of the device as well. So it reads the same. Okay, so now we can see from our seat our uh, generator's percentage of power and if they're overheating and if they're because if they overheat they'll keep resetting to zero so we can also monitor that from the chair here. Okay so to fix the overheating problem what do we need to do? We need to it's time to add a heatsink. I'm going to select the heatsink, I'm going to put it in here. So this particular heatsink can connect directly to a generator, the cube one, but we're not going to do that because I just want to show you an example. Um, I'm going to use a different shape. So if I type in heatsink, I'm going to use this flat shape here. I'm going to just place a heatsink here on the side of the ship. Doesn't have to be exact. The auto snap tool isn't doing a very good job, it keeps doing it like this. So you know what, because it's not doing a good job, I'm going to turn the auto snap tool off here. And I'm going to manually drag it down a bit so it's so it lines up nice with the ship. There we go, that's a bit better, it doesn't have to be super exact. I'm going to turn that back on now. And we're going to auto bolt this. If you don't want to auto bolt or the auto bolt doesn't do a good job, we can also manually bolt it like so. Okay, so now we need to connect this radiator with both a pipe and a cable. Um, okay, so as you can see from earlier, we have a pipe going from the generator, generator pipe socket board, and a propellant tank going all the way around here to this duct. And this duct will transfer pipe and cables. And as you can see, the heatsink has the same type of duct lining up on the heatsink, and these, and these can be used just like ducts. So heatsinks also have another bonus perk of transferring power and pipes. They transfer powers and pipes, so what I can do is I can get a cable, I can just put it on there, because the heatsink is basically a duct itself. I get a pipe, we can just put it on there. And now the heatsink has both powers and pipe is connected to the same network as this. Okay, and if we wanted to, we could just take a cable out the other side here, and we could connect something to the other side of this heatsink, and that would also receive power because heatsinks also work like ducts; they transfer cables and pipes that are connected to them. Okay, so if we go into our test mode, now that we have the cable and the pipe from our main ship network. We've got it connected to the heatsink here. If we open our universal tool, we can see the heatsink is connected and look here, the heatsink stored heat. You see that building up, that number? It can store a maximum of 15,000 heat and this is how much heat it's currently storing. So it's constantly building up heat, this heatsink. As you can see, the generators are running at 100% because the heatsink is taking up all the stored heat. The generators are not overheating thanks to the heatsink that we just plugged in. The heatsink is taking all that heat, as you can see. But what happens if we wait until the heatsink stores a maximum of 15,000 heat? Because it might be able to store the heat, but it's not dissipating any of that heat, it's just building up. Okay, it's just reached the limit, it can't store any more heat now. What's going to happen? I imagine that the generators will probably shut down and reset because they're going to overheat now that the heatsink has reached maximum capacity of 15,000. Yep, you'd see that. So the generators just overheated and they just shut down and they just reset themselves. And the reason that was is because our heatsink here stored the maximum capacity of heat that it can store from the generators. Okay, so what we've learned from this is that the heatsink is taking the heat away from the generators, so the generators can stay at full power for a longer length of time before the heatsink reaches its max capacity of heat that it can store, and the generators overheat then, and then it, they shut down again as usual. So the heatsinks, they can store excess heat. Um, they're great if you, if you have a very heat-inducing 
build, uh, maybe you've got like loads of weapons or something and you want to shoot a barrage of attacks and they generate a lot of heat in one go, then having a lot of heat sinks would be good for that in the future because they can store excess heat before slowly cooling down again. Um, but we don't have any way of dissipating that heat currently. We've got no way to dissipate the stored heat. So by default, the heat sink does dissipate 50 per second. It does dissipate a little bit of heat, as you can see in the properties here. It, the heat capacity is 15,000. The heat transfer to the radiators is 750. But as you can see here, the heat sink's main job is to transfer heat to the radiators. By it's 750 per second. That's its main job. It can dissipate 50 heat per second by itself, but mostly it transfers 750 to the radiators per second. So that means any heat stored in a heatsink will quickly get transferred to a radiator, and that's why we need a radiator. A radiator's main job is to dissipate, get rid of the stored heat. And this radiator base here, it can also store some heat itself, 1500, but its main job is getting rid of the heat, dissipating that heat. And it says here it can dissipate 1,500. Here we go, 1,500 heat per second. That's how much heat it can dissipate per second. Okay, so the radiate, uh, so the heat sink can give this 750 per second, and the, uh, the heat sink can give it give this 750 per second, and the radiator can dissipate 1,500 per second. So if we plug this radiator in now into our ship. That will dissipate the stored heat. That should dissipate the stored heat by the heat sink and we should have no heat problems. Okay, So I've auto bolted this on. But if I press the durability tool, it's lower the durability. It's only 2.24. I mean that's good enough but if we want our durability a bit higher I'm just going to add a few extra bolts in myself. Check our durability tool. It's a bit higher again. Great. Okay, so now our radiator is bolted to the ship. All we need to do is just put a cable in and a pipe in so it works. So it's pretty simple. Any any device or anything, as long as it's as there's a, a cable and a pipe nearby or a duct nearby that's connected to your ship, all you need to do is just put a pipe and a cable into it and it will work. Okay, so we now have a radiator connected as well as a heatsink. Now if we test now, and we check now, generators are generating over time, they should be generating heat and power. If we check the heatsink, heat transfer rate, see that? The heat is transferring heat to the radiators at this rate. And it can transfer heat at a maximum of the value that we read earlier, which is 750. So this is a piece of piss for the for the uh, heat system we have now. This is nowhere near maximum capacity. 750 is the limit, it's only transferring about 4. And it's not storing any heat anymore. Why is it not storing any heat anymore? Because uh, it's transferring all the heat that it's receiving to the radiator. And the radiator is dissipating that heat very fast. See? Radiator heat dissipation is 120, it's slowly building up. It can go to a maximum of 1,500. So basically, the heat sink is no longer storing heat because all the heat that it receives from the ship, from the generators, is getting transferred to the radiators faster than this can store heat. So it's transferring all the heat to the radiator, and the radiator is dissipating that heat very quickly. So so fast in fact that none of these even have to store any heat because they're, transfer they're dissipating the heat so quickly that they don't even have to store any excess heat because we have plenty of heat heat uh, dissipation for this small tiny generator setup that we have now. Okay and one more thing, the reason why the transfer rate is only 15 which is um, not much and the dissipation rate here is 255 it's because the radiators also by themselves store a little bit of heat themselves so I think that the radiator is actually storing and dissipating heat at the same time by itself so it doesn't even need the help of the heatsink because um, we have such a small generator set up here we don't have much going on so the radiator seems to be able to cope all by itself without even needing the heatsink. 
but uh, on a bigger build with more heat, the heatsink will be used. And uh, yeah, this is all the heat from the generators is getting transferred from the pipe to the ship network, which is plugged into the heatsink and the radiator. And uh, if we have a look at the radiators, the radiators are all on their max values. They're on the max heat production, max generator unit rate, max everything. And uh, and the ship isn't restarting. They're not restarting and shutting down. They're not overheating anymore because one radiator by itself seems to be enough. And uh, a heat sink will help if we need more than that. And generally, generally speaking, if um, if your ship ship is very hot and um, it's overheating, uh, the radi uh, the generator unit rate will keep resetting. That's how you can tell easily if it's overheating because it will it will keep resetting. And you can just leave all your weapons on, all your devices on to test and if everything on and 100% and it resets that means you don't have enough cooling in your ship and you need to have more radiators and more heat sinks. And uh, generally each heat sink is, is uh, about the same as one radiator extension and uh, two heat sinks per radiator base really for bigger ships. Uh, that's just a generalization. There's more precise calculators, but we're not going to overcomplicate this uh, for now. You know, don't even think about it. If you're building a small ship, just throw a couple of heat sinks and throw a couple of radiator bases, and you're good to go. You don't even have to think about any of these mechanics. And if uh, your generator unit rate keeps resetting at 100%, or whenever you fire your weapon, then you know you just don't have enough, and just add another one of each, and that's it. That's how I do my ships. I don't do any precise calculations. I just uh, throw more, slap some more uh, heat sinks and radiators on to cool the ship if it overheats, and I just plug them in, and that's it. Okay, so next we're going to go on to controls and flying. Okay, so we're going to add another two progress bars real quick, just so we have one for both the propellant, so you can see what's in the propellant tank, how much fuel we got, and how, how much fuel we have in the fuel rod for the generators. Um, because when you run out of fuel in the in the uh, fuel rod for the generators, you have to either repair it, the ship at the repair terminal, and it will automatically repair it in game, or you have to replace it yourself manually. Um, by just designing a ship, so it's going to be full anyway. But I'm just letting you know how to refill in case you don't know how to do that in the game. So we're just going to make another progress bar. We're going to go into devices controls, and I'll make a smaller progress bar this time. Let's have a look. 12 times 24 progress bar. Let's turn the snap tool on. Okay, we've got one here. It will copy this with shift and hold left click drag. Copy another one. We've got two progress bars. I'll select both of them with the shift, holding shift. I'll auto bolt it. That's strange, it doesn't want to auto bolt. Okay, sometimes it doesn't, so we'll have to manually bolt this. I'll just put one there, and put one there. Uh, if you're creating a fighting ship, sometimes bolts fly off and stuff when you get hit by weapons later. So, you know, if you want to put some extra ones, if you're building a fighter, then you could do that as well. Okay, so we have panel value. I'll make this the same as the fuel chamber, so we can read the fuel chamber here. Stored raw fuel. So we can rename this if we want, but I'll just keep the same name. Stored raw fuel panel value. We'll replace panel value with stored raw fuel. The max panel max value has to be the same as the maximum of this. So this maximum of the stored raw fuel is 30,000, 300,000. We'll copy that and we'll paste that in the max panel value here. So now that will read the fuel if we go into the test. It's reading the fuel and that's slowly going down. And the reason it's slowly going down is because the generators are using that fuel very slowly. So that's the first one done. We'll quickly do the second one, second progress bar. It will be the propellant tank. So we have to click on one of the um, the holders here, not the actual propellant tank, but the holder. Better to use that. And we look for gas network stored resource. Uh, the reason you use the holder and not the actual propellant tank and you click on a holder you use the gas stored uh, network stored resources because this reads the total propellant um, out of all propellant tanks. So if we had a second propellant tank that was next to it or connected to the ship as well, um, the gas network stored resource will show the maximum of 
both of them. So we'll use that gas network stored resource. And you know what? We're going to rename that. I'm going to rename the gas network stored resource. I'm going to name that to propellant. Is that how you spell it? Might, might have spelled it wrong. I don't know. Propellant. And we're going to copy propellant. We've just renamed it. And panel value will be called propellant as well. Okay, so even I forget things sometimes, forget the basics, you know, I've made hundreds of ships. For some reason with propellant, as long as you use the uh, the uh, container resource, network resource here, and you need rename that to propellant or whatever, um, as long as you use that and you rename the progress bar the same, um, you don't even have to change the max value on propellant for some reason, and it will still read just fine. So we didn't even bother changing the panel max value, I just put that to zero anyway, and when we test it, it still reads 1 million and that will read 2 million if we had two of these tanks uh, and 3 million if we had three of these tanks so that will just read whatever's there uh, that will give you an accurate reading of the total fuel left of your ship so that's all good we got those two panels set up okay so next up what we're going to do is we're going to add some maneuver thrusters and you don't even need my help with this one you should know by now we can just copy the maneuver thruster here let's rotate it let's put one down here on the left and uh, one should do it for a ship this small we'll flip that round we'll put one here snap that on the right oh this is the left actually what am I saying so this is the right and this is the left and we're gonna want one on the top and the bottom as well obviously hmm. okay so what we're going to do is we're going to move the chair back i'm going to create another beam here i'm going to copy this beam you can do whatever you want with your ship it doesn't have to be the same as mine and i'm going to select the green dot first that module we created of the chair so we have to re-glue that and after that i am also going to drag left click and select all of this as well all the uh, desk that we made, the control table, without selecting the rest of the ship. And uh, you can learn from this, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to detach module, when now it's all selected, and I'm going to create again. And what we just did is, we by selecting what was the module, and then just dragging any other, click, drag clicking over any other objects while we had that selected, and detaching and creating, we just made all these objects one module again. So now this control panel is part of the same module. I can move it around the place. All the bolts and everything will stay in one place. I don't have to drag and select it all the time. It's just one module now. So that just makes things easier. I like to do that. I like to detach and recreate the module with selecting new objects. So I uh, can move it a lot more easier by just selecting the green dot. Now we're going to move this chair back a bit. So we have room for a maneuver thruster in front. <clears throat> See that? I'm just going to move this chair back a little bit, like so. And then we're going to bolt this chair back to the floor again. That's all good. Check the durability tool. Oh yes, because we just placed a new frame. Almost forgot. We need to go back to the welding tool. Weld beams apply to all. Left click. This is bolted to the beam. It's all good. And now we're going to put our maneuver thruster here in the front. So let's copy another maneuver thruster. You can do your ship however you want using what we've learnt throughout the tutorial with copying and placing and all the rest of it. You don't have to do it like me. I'm just going to have one on each side just because it's better to demonstrate. So good, I've got one on each side so I can move left, right, up, down. And I'm going to bolt these on place. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to auto bolt. Like so. Okay, that should do it. Yeah, they've only got two bolts, but it's good enough. Okay, so now that they're bolted onto the beams, we're just going to connect all of these maneuver thrusters with both pipe and cable by any means necessary. You can use your ducts, remember, they transfer both. So I'll just take a cable out of here. I'll also take a pipe out of here. 
it's going across here and stops here. So where the stock stops, I'm going to continue with a cable. It's going to run all the way up the beam here and into the middle of the thruster. We're going to do the same for pipe. Let's select my pipe. Bring the cable across and into the middle of the thruster. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward and do that for all four new thrusters that we just added. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Since we moved the chair, we must not forget to plug it back in. It's not plugged anymore because we moved it. So make sure we get a wire out of there. We plug that back to our ship. So there's a cable from our ship. I'm going to plug that in. So now the chair is connected once again, now after we moved it. Also forget to reconnect things if we move them about. Because it does cut the power. I'm going to pipe in. And we are done plugging in all the pipes and cables into the maneuver thrusters. Okay, so this is quite a messy ship, you know, once you build your own ship properly, it's, it shouldn't be this messy. It should make it a lot more neater using ducts and things. It's just a demonstration. Okay, so now we have our thrusters set up. We're going to add some levers. Okay, so we're going to devices, and these levers will be able to move the thrusters from our chair. So let's go to devices, controls, and we're going to go for a lever. Let's have a look here. So we just use a standard lever for the forward thrust. Okay, which way should it face? It doesn't matter which way it faces, I'm just going to pick any direction here. So we have, we've placed down a lever, that's for the forward thrust. I'm going to auto bolt that to the beam there. If you don't want to auto bolt it, you can manually bolt it as usual. And every lever has a little plug hole. You need to plug it in or it won't have power and it won't do anything. So we're going to take a wire out of that. Oh, I can just about reach there. If you can't reach your, uh, your wire of your ship, then you might have to create another beam there or something, just to bridge the gap. Okay, now I'm going to place another lever. So this will be my forward thrust, which we'll deal with later. I'm going to place another lever, which will be a middle lever. I'm going to place a middle lever, and a middle lever will be using middle levers for almost every other movement. So that's going to be for one middle lever for left and right, one middle lever for up and down. So let's put one middle lever here, next to the chair. It's all a bit messy, it doesn't have to be exact. I'll put another middle lever here, a bit behind it. That's, uh, and we'll have one more middle lever for, as a spare one, because we will need more controls later. So we've got three middle levers, tiny space between them, just so I can show you. You don't have to have space. Auto bolt them all to the beam. And now we just need to plug them in, plug all the middle levers in to your cable of your ship. There's one plugged in, and we'll get the second one. Well, look, this one doesn't reach. Okay, we're going to run it down the side of this beam here, because we don't want to run the cable through the lever, because um, that might stop the lever, because cables are physical objects, so if a lever tries to, uh, the lever tries to move and there's a cable inside of the lever, it could get stuck, so make sure we take a cable out here. We run it around the beam. Okay, so now all the levers are connected to cables, which is connected to the ship. So they should all have power. And uh, we can double check by just testing. Yep, they have power, it's all good. And uh, simple buttons and levers, they just require power. That's an example of something that doesn't need a pipe. You don't need pipes to for little buttons and little just power things like turning buttons on and off and levers. Pipe is only really used for ammo, cooling, and fuel. So, of course, we don't need pipe for the controls. Okay, so we've placed our levers down, and uh, we're going to move the thrusters now with the levers. So, there's several ways you can do this. Okay, so in Starbase, generally, you can just rename any button or lever that's top value, like lever state here. Just like how we did the progress bars, we renamed the um, 
the top value there. You could just rename the top lever state. We could rename that and um, could just call it lever one or something, or, or just call it forward thrust. Don't copy me, um, I'm just showing you an example. So just leave your levers at default settings. And I'm just going to show you something here. So we could just rename this lever manually. We could just call it forward. And then we could just rename the back thrusters. And we could just call all the back thrusters forward as well. I could just call this one forward as well. So in Starbase, when a device has the same name as a button or a lever, then that button and lever will operate that device because they both have the same name. And the same goes for progress bars. Progress bars, if they have the same name, as um, whatever it is that you want to read, then it will read the value in whatever it is that you want to read, like this propellant tank, which we already did. So that's how easy it is in Starbase. You just need to rename your buttons and your levers to the f devices that you want to operate. So that's one way of doing it. We could just manually do that, and I could just um, rename the lever forward. And now that I've called this thrust the same name as forward as the lever, I could just pull this lever back now and as you can see the ship is moving slightly because that top right thruster that we just renamed is called the same name and when this lever is pulled the lever max output would be 100 and so this thruster is now outputting 100 the same as the lever max output but one thing you don't learn is that the thrusters have a max output of 10,000 so we would have to rename the max value of the lever to 10,000 to get the maximum output here and we would also have to uh, the lever bind move speed that's how fast the lever can move we would also want to increase that by times 10 for this thruster if we do that whoa look at that see now the thruster is operating at full force so that's just an example of how you how um, you can just rename a thruster and just manually do it. But we're not going to do that. That was I just wanted to show you, just to get a, a concept of how the devices in Starbase work. So uh, I'm assuming you didn't do any of that, and you just have this the way it was before, which was thruster state, and um, we rename that back to what it was before. Lever state was it? Yep. We'll rename that to what it was before. Okay, so that's just to show you how, how you can manually just have a lever, just move or operate devices. Uh, and next we're going to show how, how you should be doing it for Starbase ships. Um, because in Starbase, you have a couple of devices that automatically calculate where the ship thrusters should be used and what thrusters should be used um, and stuff like that. I'll show you in a minute. So yeah, in Starbase we have a device uh, and it's called a FCU, a flight control unit. And what it does is it automatically calculates um, what thrusters should be used to go left, to go right, to go up and go down. And if your ship is imbalanced, because if you look here, our ship isn't even balanced properly. Um, we've got like this heatsink and this radiator on one side and nothing on this side. What the FCU does these flight control units, we're going to use an advanced one because it's exactly the same as the basic one, but it just has some added controls and you want to get used to using that one right away. No one uses the basic ones. So we're just going to place an advanced one here. Oh, and one more thing, make sure that your arrows of your FCU are facing in the direction of your ship. And what this does is, once it's plugged in and we've uh, inputted the thrusters that it wants to use, so <clears throat> once it's plugged in and we set it all up correctly, what this FCU will do is it will automatically calculate what thrusters need to be used to keep the ship straight as it flies forward. Um, it will automatically calculate what thrusters need to be used to go left, to go right, to go up and to go down. And it just makes our job a lot easier than manually naming every single thruster and manually naming every single lever and doing it all ourselves. That's what the FCU is for. It's, it automatically does all this for us, and every ship should have an FCU. Unless you're building a very weird, wonky ship, um, sometimes the FCU doesn't calculate things properly. If you've got a very weird ship, that's the only case where you would need to manually do levers yourself. Okay, so let's get started on how to set up our FCU system so it automatically steers in the right directions with just a couple of levers. Okay, so let's just set this controls up now. But 
waffling any longer. We've got the FCU here. Okay, we're going to bolt this in. I can't auto bolt it because it's in an awkward position. We'll just manually bolt it on like that. And now we're going to have a main flight computer. So we need at least one of each, a main flight computer and an FCU to fly a ship. Okay, so we've got a main flight computer. Doesn't want to auto bolt. I'll manually bolt this in on all four corners. That should do it. Let's check our durability. Yes, it's good. No errors. And now we just need to connect both of these to the ship network. One cable out here. Connect it to our ship. And I'll get a cable out of the uh, flights computer. Also connect that to the ship. Okay, so <clears throat> the FCU. So how does it work? All we need for the FCU to work and calculate our flight control um, automatically and keep the ship flying straight and moving left, right and up and down easier. All we need is to copy these values here. So here we have FCU forward, FCU backwards, FCU rotational pitch, FCU rotational yaw, FCU rotational yaw roll. And we have some other things as well but we don't need to use all of them. Okay so we're just going to use FCU forward. We're going to copy this CRTLC and we're going to paste it on the same as this straightforward lever here. We're going to say it's a lever state, we're going to rename this FCU forward. Okay, same as that computer. So this is now called FCU forward and FCU we want to be able to yaw as well. So what is your yaw is moving left and right, that's what yaw is. Okay, so we're going to copy FCU rotational yaw Okay, we start with pitch first actually. Why am I doing your first? Start with pitch first, so that's up and down movement. We copy that and we'll put it on one of the middle levers here. We'll call this middle lever, we'll call it FCU rotational pitch. Okay, now we'll do the same for all the controls that we want. FCU rotational yaw, we'll call this lever FCU rotational yaw as well. So we have FCU rotational pitch, FCU rotational yaw, FCU forward. Now these levers have the same name as the FCU movements on this little device here. All we have to do is pull this lever and it will move the ship forward. Uh, we pull the yaw lever, it should move left and right, depending on the middle lever, depending if we're going up or down. And same with the roll. Okay, so next up, now that we've done that, that's not all we have to do. So if I go into test mode here, if I try and pull these levers, nothing's going to happen. Because we don't just need to have the levers have the same name as the FCU, but we also need the main flight computer. You see these, the thruster power level 01, thruster power level 02, these are the names of thrusters. All these thrusters by default their name is just called thruster state. That's it. Okay, what we need to do for this to work is that all the thrusters that we are using needs to be named on our flight computer. So these are the names of the thrusters and what we can do for that, we can do that automatically using a thruster uh, field name tool up here. We left click on that. What we can do is we can just say manual and then we can say name all device fields or name all selected uh, device fields or selected thrusters. So let's just do all device fields and see what happens. We click on that. Okay so now this tool has automatically named all our thrusters. You see it's now called thruster power level 6, thruster power level 8, thruster power level 1. It just automatically named all our thrusters with different names as you can see and all the different names that are named are actually on the flight computer so we have a look at the flight uh, we can close this now if we have a look at our main flight computer um, it also has up to 50 thruster power level all the way up to 50 
which is also named on so now that the name of our thrusters actually exists on our flight computer like power level 8 that's that's on here that's down here we've got thrust power level 8 it will now be able to read it and so will the FCU so if we go and we pull a lever now it's moving because it can read it Okay, and if we check the other levers here, so let's have a look here. We have FCU rotational yaw that should move it left and right now. There we go, see? It's moving it left, right. And if we pull the lever backwards, we'll turn it the opposite direction. It's moving left when we pull it back. And we pull the middle lever forward, it moves right. As you can see, it moves right way faster than it moves left. Uh, that's because our ship is in balance. We've got this heat sink and this radiator on one side and we don't on the other side, so it's just a balance issue. And then lastly, we've got the pitch, FCU pitch, rotational pitch. That should go up, when we put it up, and that should go down, when we put it down. So, our controls are now working. Okay, the FCU. Uh, the levers have the same names as the controls on the FCU, so that's all we have to do. We have to rename our levers to the same as the FCU movements, you know, rotational yaw, FCU rotational forward, uh, FCU forward, sorry. And then the second part that I showed you is the flight computer that we have, which contains a name of all the thrusters that sh are used on your ship. These are all the names of thrusters that should be used on your ship, okay. If uh, the main flight computer doesn't have uh, the name of your thruster, so let's just say this back thruster is just called Bob or something. Okay, just an example. It's just called Bob. This thruster. If that's not, if Bob isn't on this computer, then it won't be able to fly. It won't recognize it. It's not going to use it. So this thruster is dead. It's not going to be used because um, it's not on the main flight computer. There's no Bob here. Okay, but if I, let's say I rename Thruster Level 2 and I just call Thruster Level 2 Bob. Okay, so now, so now Bob is on the flight computer. If I use the lever, Bob is working, see? Bob is working. So that's all it is, okay? All it is basically is that your thrusters, the name of your thruster, needs to be on this computer. And as long as the name of your thruster is on the computer, then it will be able to work with the FCU and the FCU forward and all these controls here as long as there's levers for each control for each of the controls then it will automatically fly your ship with the levers so that's all you have to do um, I know it's a, bit, a little bit complicated but that's how it is okay so when we go into our test mode and we sit in our seat now by default we should be able to just use our WASD keys that we would in game to fly a normal ship to automatically move the levers. Okay, I'm moving down now. Okay, let's move left. Let's move right with the D key. Okay, so if I get out my seat, I'll just show you. So by default, um, when you use the WASD keys or whatever controls that you set in your settings or, or your key bindings, it should move any lever from the FCU within, I think, about a meter. So if this lever was over here, it would still move when I'm sitting in my chair and I'm using the ASD keys, WASD keys. Uh, so any lever within a certain radius, about a meter or two, as long as you're sitting in a chair and you're using the WASD keys, you can use those levers. Same goes for buttons as well. Um, and in order to set key bindings, okay, so in order to set key bindings, I have to press V. I have to look at anything while sitting in my chair and press V. If I do that, I get this menu here. Okay, and in this men <clears throat> menu, you can find the controls on your ship. I've got lots of random controls here that's got nothing to do with the ship. That's just my own key bindings from other ships. And um, in this key binding menu, you should find stuff like FCU forward, FCU back, there you go, look, FCU backwards, lever states, let's have a look here, 
FCU yaw, see? F rotational yaw plus. FCU rotational yaw plus, that's D on my keyboard. So when I press D, it adds to FCU rotational yaw. I can left click on this and I can change this. I can just say G. Maybe I want to move right with the G key for some reason, okay? Maybe my hands are built different, okay? Now when I press G, it's also moving right. It's, it's, it's using the FCU rotational yaw. The same goes for buttons. Okay, if I have if I had a button here, which we'll get to later, I can press V to open up my custom key bindings. I can find that button down here somewhere, and then I'll just have to left click on it and then press any key I want, and that button will be binded to that key. So that's how you set custom controls for your ship. Okay, if you don't want to change anything, just tap ESQ. If you want to remove the key completely, hold ESQ. Okay, so we're going to go back to SC rotational yaw because I don't want it to be G, I want it to be D. That's the control I like to have. So everyone has their own controls in Starbase. I, I have different flight controls to most people. Um, by default in Starbase, I think when you move up, it goes down, and when you move down, it goes up. I've kind of reversed that because I prefer it to be more straightforward. But that's how you change the controls anyway. You sit in your seat, you look at anything on your control table or your levers, you just press V, and then you get to open up the controls and you get to change the key bindings to whatever it is that you want. Okay? So you've got plus for forward and you've got minus for forward. What that is is moving the lever forward or moving the lever backwards, basically. And you can change those to any controls you want. Uh, you can save those custom key bindings to custom 1 here, or custom 2, that's also automatic. Okay, so we know the controls now, how to operate the levers, and how to get a flight system going. Okay, so I'm, I'm not happy with this ship right now. Right now, even with the flight control unit, it's still flying wonky, and it's not really staying straight. Um, and the thing is, with, name it, with um, thrusters and getting your thrusters correct, and the weight distribution of your ship, that's kind of just something you do with experience because the flight control unit, even though I just gave it all that credit and I said that it does try and keep your ship straight, even when you've got extra thrusters, sometimes it doesn't. You know, sometimes you just have to manually do things yourself if your ship is a bit big and wonky. Sometimes that just happens. Sometimes you've got to do it yourself. But the best advice I can give you for your ship to fly straight is to have extra thrusters available for the flight computer to use. So here we've only got one. Ideally, we should have two on each side, and that will should make it fly a little bit more straight. And um, in addition to that, ideally, you just want if you go to the visualization tools here and go to the drop down, we can visualize things. We can visualize the thruster exhaustion. So that means anything in front of this thruster will get damaged. You shouldn't have anything in front of the thrusters. We can tick that off and we can visualize the center of mass so we've got all these different things we can visualize and to visualize uh, the center of mass this little purple box in the center of our ship here it, as you can see it's not exactly in the center it's, it's slightly off center okay if I zoom in it's slightly to the left here and that's because the ship is slightly heavy on one side so the best thing I can say really is if you want your ship to fly straight is to Try and make your ship perfectly balanced as best you can. So have a heat sink on this side if you've got one on this side, so it has an even weight distribution. And like I was saying earlier, just have a couple of extra maneuver thrusters placed here and there, so that if the ship is imbalanced and it is flying wonky, the FCU will try and use those extra thrusters to keep the ship straight. But it doesn't always work, and it doesn't always keep the ship straight, even if you do everything I just said. And in those cases, in those unique ships, Sometimes you just have to put up with a slight off-center flying or you'll have to manually do it yourself by making your own levers or your own assistance. But, you know, as a beginner you don't really need to do any of that. You know, just make a small ship as best you can, make it as balanced as you can, add a few extra maneuver thrusters and it should fly well enough. Okay, so as you know the ship isn't very well balanced so I'm just going to quickly add some more maneuver thrusters on the sides here and fast forward a little bit. And remember, whenever you add new thrusters, you have to make sure you re-cable them and re-pipe them, and make sure they're named on the flight control unit with a separate name.
Okay, so next up I'm going to make some powerful... I'm going to show you a different type of thruster because this is important. Uh, so far we've just been using these simple small ones. But next up I'm going to show you how to use uh, a big thruster, which um, is a bit more harder to assemble, but you can also get them pre-assembled in the module section. And uh, they produce, a, they take a lot more power and propellants, but they'll move the ship much faster forward. Um, so yeah, thrusters. We're going to add some big thrusters on the back now, like a proper ship. And the reason these small basic thrusters that we started with are called maneuver thrusters uh, is the clue is in the name. The reason they're called maneuver thrusters is if we go into our search here, uh, machinery, thrusters, and we find the maneuver thrusters that we've been using all along. Uh, they're called maneuver thrusters because they're meant for just um, moving the ship left, right, up, down, rolling, uh, or making minor adjustments to the balance with the FCU, but they're not really meant to propel um, small or medium ships forward um, because they're not that powerful, they're just meant for maneuvering basically. Uh, and for very big ships you have big thrusters even use, being used for the sides as well like maneuver thrusters, but we're not doing that. So we're going to learn how to assemble a bigger thruster, so we have a bigger thruster on the back. Uh, this ship is so small it probably doesn't it doesn't need big thrusters, but we're just demonstrating, so you probably want to make bigger ships than this. So big thrusters, we have a few different types of thrusters. If we just go into our search menu and we just type in thruster here, and we scroll down, we can find pre-assembled thruster modules for us already. So we've got thruster box here in the space module section, uh, starter kit, we've got thruster box. If we come here, we can see it's already pre-assembled for us. We've got pre-assembled box thruster for us. This is called a box thruster. It's made of several parts. And we also have a pre-assembled triangle thruster, which is also made of several different parts. Uh, and all we have to do is auto bolt them together, uh, auto bolt these, and they will be bolted mostly correctly. Sometimes it's not enough bolts, but and uh, but these are also tier one, so we only have pre-assembled tier one of these thrusters. And generally, thrusters work with their own tiers. So if we've got a tier one generator and a tier one fuel chamber, we want to stick to tier one parts only. We only want to have tier one thrusters. If we had uh, tier two generators and a tier two fuel chamber and fuel rod, then we could have tier two thrusters. Okay, but because uh, we're only using tier 1 and we're just starting out, they have to be tier 1 as well. So make sure these are tier 1. So yes, we have thrusters pre-assembled for us already. All we have to do is add a hard point onto these sections here. This is where the hard points go. So we just add a hard point onto that. They just snap on right there, and they have to snap exactly on the space. If they're even slightly misaligned, then the thruster isn't going to work. That's a common thruster issue. And we have the same thing for the triangle thruster here. Put a hard point on there. Okay, so these are two bigger versions of the thrusters, and we also have another, another type of thruster, which you're not going to get to for a long time. I still don't even use it to this day. That's called a plasma thruster. A plasma thruster is like a huge late game thruster that's more complicated to assemble. We're not going to go through that in this beginner guide. So there's plenty of different types of thrusters. Most ships you want to use these bigger, slightly bigger thrusters here, the, either the box thrusters or the triangle thrusters for the back of your ship. And for most ships, unless they're pretty big and heavy, you can use these maneuver thrusters for the sides and the up and down movements and you use these ones for the back of the ship. And if your ship is big, it's a big cargo ship or very heavy, then you can use these bigger thrusters for the sides as well to maneuver it left and right, up and down. So we've got the pre-assembled thrusters already. I'm just going to show you what the contents of the thrusters are, because if you're making a tier 2 thruster or tier 3, you're going to have to assemble it yourself. So I'll just delete these. So if I go into the thruster section again, go into machinery, I go to thrusters, um, I'll find box thruster body tier 1, that's the first part we need. And then, because each of these bigger thrusters are made from several parts. And then I'll, I'll need a combustion chamber, box thruster combustion chamber. These same parts exist for the triangle thruster as well, so I don't need to show you again. Just lay that out there, it doesn't fit in right now. Because we need a box thruster nozzle tier 1. 
Let's put a tier 1 nozzle on there. Now the combustion chamber should fit in here as well. We flip it around. There we go, the combustion chamber fits in. And then finally we have these last two bits here, which is the thruster electricity converter tier 1. That fits in one of these holes here. Yep, we just wait until it snaps. We have the thruster com propellant converter. So you don't need to do all that if you're using tier 1. You can find those pre-assembled modules I already showed you earlier. But that's just how you assemble the thruster. So if you want a tier 2 thruster, all you have to do is assemble it with the tier 2 parts, the tier 2 versions of these. And, uh, and then once you've done, select, <clears throat> drag and select, auto bolt it, uh, and then save it as a module. And then you can reuse that. You don't have to assemble it ever again. Okay, you only have to assemble it once. And you could just save yourself a module and just keep placing the module. Okay, so we have a box thruster and it's the same. It's pretty much the same for the triangle thruster. It's made up of the same several bits, just a different shape. You have the triangle base tier one, and then we have the combustion to triangle combustion chamber that fits in somewhere here. Okay, I think we need the nozzle first, so let's just get the get the nozzle out. Triangle thruster nozzle. Where is it now? Triangle thruster nozzle, there it is. We fit the nozzle in. And then we have the combustion chamber. Combustion chamber goes with every tier, it's just one tier. And the combustion chamber has snapped inside there. Great, and then all we have left is the same electricity converter. Put that in. And if we were making a tier two version, we would have to use tier two of all these parts. This is just tier one. A tier one thruster propellant converter, we put that in as well. Okay, why isn't this snapping in? Did we put it in the wrong way around? Let's take this back out, the electricity converter. Let's put that in this hole. Just put it in wherever it snaps. And now we have the propellant converter in the bottom. Okay, that's it. So that's the triangle thruster assembled. You don't have to bother, you can just use the pre-assembled tier 1 version. I'm just going to save that as a module. So now we have our thrusters assembled. And for the triangle thruster we have to put a hard point <coughs> on the outside here. So let's put a hard point here. There we go. And then we can bolt that on and we've got assembled triangle thruster. All you need to do is plug, put that on your ship, bolt the uh, hard point to the beams of your ship and plug it in and that's it the thruster will work just like all the previous thrusters that we've made already i just need to bolt a hard point on if i select this now and uh, i'll detach and recreate that as a module again since we added the hard point i can just connect that sideways onto the ship here this big boy thruster let's snap it onto the side of the ship so that the hard point fits in neatly like that and we can, if we bolt the hard point to this beam, so we can bolt this hard point to the beam here. Should be able to do that from the top. Blah blah blah. There we go. It's attached. Now this hard point is bolted to the beam from the top, and it needs a minimum of two bolts. But you really want to get at least four, um, otherwise it's going to be really flimsy. And we have a durability error. So a lot of the time when you try to auto bolt these big thrusters it doesn't put enough bolts in by default so if we check in our durability tool we press on the red square we can see what the problem is it says at least one or two more bolts are needed somewhere and it's pointing towards the front here these blinking red bolts in front it says we need one or two more bolts in this area so that's these bolts here if I just add one or two more bolts press again it's green. So that's how you fix things with the durability tool. You press on the red box or the yellow box, whatever the problem is. It will highlight the problem. The durability is quite low here. You find where it's blinking. It's blinking here with these bolts. I'll just add a few more bolts here. There we go, problem solved. We've got nearly two durability, that's fine. Anything over one is good. Preferably get something over 1.5, just be careful. And that's it, we have a big thruster bolted on the side here. If we plug that in, that will work. 
Okay, so we're not going to use this. <clears throat> we're not going to use this um, the square one. I think we're going to use a triangle one because the triangle one's a bit smaller. It's a bit less powerful than the square one, than the uh, rectangle one. Sorry, um, but it will fit better on the back. We can't really fit these square ones because they're bloody massive, and um, and we don't need that much power. So the square ones are, are a little bit stronger than the triangle ones, but not by a huge deal. Both of these thrusters are much stronger than the maneuver thrusters. And they also work a little bit differently. So these rectangle thrusters, if we plug this in, I'll just plug this in here. And uh, and remember, we want to name our thruster. So if we just click on the thruster body, we can edit the name of the thruster. Again, remember, make sure that it's on the computer, on the flight computer. So I'll just pick a value there. I'll pick the last one, thruster power level 50. I'll copy that. And I'll make the name thruster state thruster power level 50. So now it's named on the flight computer. It will work with the FCU and all the rest of it. And I will calculate automatically how to use this thruster. Um, and one thing to note is this thing you keep seeing here, the thruster current thrust, you don't have to worry about that. It does pretty much nothing. It doesn't do anything, so just ignore that. Okay, so now that's plugged in, you go in. I'll check my universal tool. There's it's receiving power, should be all good. Let's uh, turn it on. Look, it's working. It's shooting fire, but it's the ship is very wonky because we've got one thruster on one side. But at least it works, so we know that works. Okay, so we're going to remove this. I was just to demonstrate the box thruster. I'm going to move this away now, and we're going to go on to our triangle thruster, and we're going to plug this triangle thruster directly onto the back of our ship. Maybe get two one. Try and make it nice and symmetrical. Okay, so triangle thrusters work a bit differently from the box thrusters. They're both plug and play. You know, you both just add a hard point to the assembled thruster and then you just bolt the hard point to the beam. And thrusters only work if the hard point is bolted to a beam. Um, and, uh, and they both should just work plug and play, just like we showed there. But the difference is with triangle thrusters is <clears throat> if we were to have multiple rectangular thrusters like this and they all have their separate hard points they all have to have their separate hard point connected to a beam and if we gave them separate name we gave the top one 49 or something and the bottom one 50 then they would operate separately they would do their own thing you know they're separated basically they both have different names they both have different hard points they operate separately and if we took this top hard point away this wouldn't work at all because it doesn't have a hard point. It doesn't matter if it's close to this one, it's just not going to work. But the difference with the triangle thruster from the box thruster is with the triangle thruster, if we were to copy the triangle thruster here, so let's just copy our assembled triangle thruster, and then we flip it around like this, and then we add the copied one like this. So now it, it fits together perfectly. We've got two triangle thrusters like that, back to front, and we bolted these together they have to be bolted together um, with at least two bolts or one one or two bolts or not yes they do yeah they do okay and if we bolted them together now and if we plugged this into the ship this triangle thruster um, both triangle thrusters would work even though the top one doesn't have a hard point and the bottom one does <clears throat> and that's the difference between triangle thrusters and the big thrusters is with the triangle thrusters I could add as many different triangles onto it. Let's see, I can just copy paste as many triangles as I want onto it. And uh, as long as they're bolted together, as long as they have at least one bolt touching each other, if, if they don't have at least one bolt together, so I add a bolt here, there we go. So it's, they're all attached, they're all one object, they all have a bolt together. As long as they're bolted together, even if only one of them has a hard point, just this bottom left one, all of them will work. All of these thrusters will fire. So that's the difference between the triangle ones and the box thrusters, is the triangle thrusters, you only need one hard point. You can have another one if you want, just for security. You can put one here if you want to, and have another one over here if you want to. You don't need to. But as long as you only have one hard point bolted to the beams of your ship as plugged in, then all attached triangle thrusters will work. Okay, so we'll put that to the test. We'll put this on the ship. 
So that just saves you having to add a thousand different hard points later when you've got a, a big thruster array on the back of your ship. And you can't do that with the... Uh, I'm just going to add a few extra bolts here since it's usually not enough. And you can't do that with the box thruster, so that's the difference. So let's plug this in. Okay, so we're going to get rid of all these back thrusters. We're going to get rid of Bob. We're going to get rid of all these maneuver thrusters. Bye bye, we don't need you anymore. And I'm just going to fit this on this nice chunky back thruster. I'm going to fit this on. Now you can fit this on however you want. I'm going to try and make it nice and symmetrical. I think I'll do. Yeah, I'll keep that hard point on. I'll delete all these back hard points here. Don't need these anymore. We're replacing it with a big boy. Let's get rid of the cables. We go into our cable tool. When you're in your cable tool, right click to delete a cable. We're going to delete all these cables that we placed for the uh, maneuver thrusters on the back. Don't need this anymore. way to the edge here so the ship is connected again and this pipe connection here make sure I didn't break any connections okay so the ship is all connected again and we're going to place our new thruster on the back here so let's see if we can snap it on okay it roughly snaps on but it's not exactly in the middle let's try and get it in the middle as best we can that looks to be in the middle and, uh, and yeah, the hard point has to be able to bolt on directly onto a beam. So this hard point is sitting right on top of the bottom beam here. So we can now, from underneath the hard point, we can add some bolts here. Four bolts. That's now bolted the hard point to the beams. And the hard point is bolted to the thrusters. So now it should all be connected when we select our durability tool. Yep, it's connected. Now in our durability tool we've got all these boxes here, so it's saying there's a problem. Let's have a look. What's the problem? We left click on it. Let's see what the problem is. Durability is 3.5. That's fine. Let's check the other ones. Warning, this durability is low. No, it's fine. It's good. Durability. So it's all good. It's all working. So when you connect a thrust to your ship like this, um, <clears throat> just remember that um, if you're having extra triangle thrusters sitting on top, just make sure that the triangle thruster needs to be bolted to the other thruster that has the hard point or it's not going to operate. Okay, so we're going to plug this in. There we go, we've got cable and pipe in there. We're going to select the thruster. So it's the, um, the thruster body, that's what we need to select, thruster base. I'm going to change the name. I'm going to change it to um, something that's on the box here that isn't being used. I'll just pick the, the last value there, thruster power level 50 again. I'll pick that. Okay, let's paste it. Yeah, thruster power level 50. Now, we could name the other half of the thruster, the, the other triangle thruster. We could give it a different name. But it's not going to change anything. It's not going to help. We want to keep it the same name, because that's also another difference between triangle thrusters and other thrusters. Is if is if if you do happen to connect extra triangle thrusters on top of one, like so, if you do happen to um, connect extra triangle thrusters together, if they're connected directly together like this, triangle thrusters. Yes, they don't need another hard point. You you only need one hard point as long as the, these are bolt thrusters are all bolted together, they will work. So I just add a bolt, a few bolts on the side here to connect it. It will work or we'll auto bolt it. Yes, these two thrusters they will work as I explained earlier because they're bolted to these ones that has a hard point already. But uh, triangle thrusters, <clears throat> if you bolt them together like this then they can only really use one name. They can only use one name thruster, they can only work at the same time. So they all have to be named power uh, the same name, which is 
Thrust power level 50, which we just named this one that's attached to the hardpoint. They should all have one name if they're going to be attached together like this. Now, if we had a, another thruster, triangle thruster, that was spaced out, let's say here, and there was just a, a tiny space like this, so it's not directly bolted to this one. So this one is a separate thruster now, it's a separate entity, and we connected this with its own hardpoint, then we could give this one a separate name, and that would be fine. But all connected triangle thrusters that are connected directly to each other should have the same name because they're all going to operate at the same time just like one big thruster as long as they're connected directly to each other like that and we only need one hard point okay so I'm just going to delete this so make sure this one's power level 50 and this is power level 50 they both have the same name if we go into uh, test mode let's check it's universal tool they both have power now if we press the forward lever and it's not working so oh yes I made a mistake I think I might have unplugged something earlier hmm look what did I undo earlier in my ship something disconnected oh yes there's no power see I, I accidentally deleted this cable as I was removing the cables from the old thrusters I cut the connection here so let's just make sure this is connected I probably did something else wrong as well. Let's check my pipe tool, see if anything's disconnected. No, I think it's all good. It's all good. Okay, let's have a look. Should be all good. Okay, let's pull the lever. There we go. So I just accidentally took off the cable there. And as you can see, the back thruster is working. It's very quick as well, because that double triangle thruster that we just created, this double triangle thruster setup that we just created here, that's more than powerful enough for this tiny little ship. So that's how you assemble a big thruster. Okay, um, I, you know, I went through it in a lot of detail, but what you need to know is that triangle thrusters are made up of triangles, and you can add as many triangles as you want to make the thruster bigger. Uh, as long as they're bolted together, they share the same name, and uh, they only need one hard point. And as long as they're all bolted together and share the same name, they will work as one big thruster. If you want separate thrusters using triangle thrusters, give them their own hard point, give them their own name, and have a small gap in between, just like that. And that's how triangle thrusters work. And the box thrusters, like we went through before, they're just their own separate entity. You don't have to worry about any of that. You can have them side by side. Just make sure they have their own hard points and make sure they have their own name and they will work as well just like maneuver thrusters so that's the difference between all the thrusters we have a nice big chunky back thruster now for our ship which is slightly off balance because it's slightly on it's on the bottom half of the ship but that's okay my ship is terrible this is an example ship uh, so next now that you know how thrusters work we're going to add some cargo to the ship so we're going to see if we can add some cargo to the ship that we can access so if you want to mine some rocks we actually have a practical ship that you can build. Okay, so we're almost done now. We just need to check, uh, do, do some essential accessories for your ship. So let's do a cargo crate. So if we go into our search here and we type in crate, material crate will pop up. I'll just, just see where that is in the, um, in the folders. I'll just find where that is first. So devices maybe. Ca devices cargo. That's where it is. And it's material crate S, small. That stands for small, even though they haven't implemented anything bigger. So we pick our cargo crate here. And this is a cargo crate. This is what you use to uh, store your ores that you collect with your pickaxe. Uh, and in the future, you'll have ships with mining lasers and ore collectors, which are devices, which you can also use to store ores in these boxes. And each one of these cargo crates can store one one full stack of an ore, so you need quite a lot if you want to make a decent mining ship. Um, a lot of good mining ships have hundreds of these all attached together. But this is just a very basic beginner tutorial, so I just attach a few just to show you how they work. And um, oh, I have to deselect that, go back to my select tool. That sometimes happens. So we have a cargo crate here. We're going to attach one to our ship. 
I'm going to attach two to my ship just to show you how they work. Attach a few. We'll have one on the back here, and I'm going to have it so that they're touching the beam here so I can bolt it to the beam. And I'll have one on the left here because we want our ship to be symmetrical, even weight distribution. And I'm just going to see what happens when I auto bolt these to the ship, these two cargo crates. Let's see. It hasn't put enough bolts in because the beams aren't touching very well. So there's a couple of ways we can fix that. If you don't have many beams for your cargo crate, you can also you can just and you wanna wanna fit your cargo crate onto just one beam, you can just manually do things. I can use a weld block or something. Use these glue blocks that I showed earlier. <clears throat> earlier in the video, I could just add some glue blocks. Could solve it that way. But we don't want to get into a habit of using glue blocks. They're just for emergency measures or I can add an extra beam. I'm going to add an extra beam here so I can fit these cargo crates on. And cargo crates are very heavy as well. They're, if you check their properties, you can see the weight and they're very heavy. So if you're gonna have a lot of cargo crates on your ship, you need to have increased power, increased thrusters to carry that weight fast. And you need increased beams. You need more beams and pillars because beams and pillars will uh, are needed to support your ship frame so that you can carry heavy weight. So I'm going to add some extra beams onto the ship here. Copy paste this. So now I have two extra beams here. I'm going to go into our welding tool. I'm going to weld all the beams. I'm going to be going through this quite quick now because you should know the basics of building now. And I'm going to select this again. And look, the auto bolt tool did a bad job. Not only did it try to bolt it, <clears throat> bolt it to the side here with not enough bolts, it also added a random bolt here to the radiator, so we're not going to auto bolt this. I'm going to take this back off again and put it back on. That way it removes the bolts because the auto bolt tool did a terrible job. I'm going to put this back on again. Okay, so we're going to do bolt this ourselves. And yeah, I just want you to know that when you're bolting cargo crates to your ship, you should always manually bolt them yourselves. You should never use the auto bolt. Why? Because auto bolt tool, in general, it does the worst job with cargo crates. So we're going to bolt it ourselves. It usually adds way too many bolts or bolts in the wrong places. So we're going to add two bolts here in these little gaps here to the beam. And we're going to add another two bolts here on the other side. That should do it. We have a cargo on the side here. Let's add bolts onto the other one. Two on here on this side and two on this side on that new beams that we just placed. So you can do this however you want, just have some beams on your ship that you can bolt onto the cargo crates. Okay, so now that we've bolted them correctly ourselves without using the auto bolt tool, I'm going to plug these cargo crates in. No, before that, I'm going to show you something uh, with the cargo crates. So the cargo crates, by default, they have a, a, a mass of 9,564 kg. You don't have to know all these exact numbers, so they're quite heavy. And the thing is, when you're, whenever you're working on a ship, it doesn't show the durability tool. It doesn't show the heaviest your ship is. It's just showing what's in on it currently. If we go to our virtual mass tool here on the top, for the virtual mass tool, what it does is it applies the maximum amount of weight that this ship can hold. And the thing about Starbase ships is the durability actually changes depending on how heavy the ship is. It has realistic weight mechanics, so a full cargo crate full of heavy ores is heavier than just a cargo crate with nothing in it, in a designer. And that affects the durability, that will lower the durability, that will increase the amount of bolts that we need to bolt it on for it to be stable. And that's what the virtual mass tool is for. So if we left click on the virtual mass tool and we press <clears throat> add maximum mass, we tick that box, apply to all. Now, if we left click on our cargo crate again, with the select tool selected, if I left click on a cargo crate, look, it, we were just here previously and it was 9,500. Now look, it's 49,600 the weight. That's what our virtual mass tool does. Our virtual mass tool, it, uh, it automatically adds 
the maximum possible weight onto all our objects that can carry weight, such as the cargo crates. And because of this, this has actually affected our durability as well. Our durability has gone down as well. But the good news is that our durability is still over 1, so that will have no problems. This will have no issues carrying the highest, um, the heaviest ore. It will have no issues because we just added the maximum mass of the durability tool. And it still works, it's still fine, it's still good. But to give you an example of a common mistake people make is, if I remove one bolt, so now this, this cargo crate only has three bolts now. Now it's not secure enough to carry that weight. You see the strength factor is 0 0.4, anything less than 1 is unusable. The ship's going to break apart as soon as we start flying around with this. Now if we go onto our virtual mass tool and re we remove the imaginary weight that we just added to the cargo crates here. Let's remove mass, apply to ore. Look, now this cargo crate works. So a common mistake that people make is they don't place enough bolts. They'll place like three bolts or something um, for their cargo crates and then they'll fly they'll build their ship and then they'll fly out they will do some mining and then all of a sudden their ship starts breaking apart and they're like why my durability was fine when i designed the ship and the reason for that is because they forgot to check the virtual mass tool so when you're building a cargo ship and you're adding cargo crates make sure you check your virtual mass tool as you're building it and every time you add cargo crates add the maximum mass apply to all and when you do that, <clears throat> add maximum mass, sorry, apply to all. And when you do that, it will add um, an imaginary weight to your cargo crates to the maximum amount. So you can see what the durability will be if this was holding the heaviest ore in the game. And as you can see, it's not sturdy enough. It doesn't have enough bolts. So I need to have another bolt here. Now it's green. So do that whenever you're adding cargo crates. If you're making a big cargo ship and you want loads of cargo crates on your ship, you want hundreds and hundreds of cargo crates on your ship, you're not going to want to go and manually bolt everything one by one because you know, like I said earlier, the auto bolt tool does a poor job with cargo crates. You need to do it manually yourself. You're not going to want to do that all by yourself. That's going to take forever. So the best way if you're making a big cargo ship is to place your beams on your cargoes off your ship first. Let's just use this example here, you don't have to copy me here. So you can just make it first yourself off the ship like this. What you can do is, as you can see from our previous example, the cargo crate, even with the maximum weight of just, uh, mass, it needs a minimum of four spread out bolts. But ideally, you really want to have at least five. So have at least five bolts spread out on your cargo crate like this, one, two, three, four, five. Five will do the trick. Let's just add a sixth one to be symmetrical and extra secure. So you really want to have at least five bolts on your each cargo crate so it can carry the heaviest weight without any issues with the durability. And we can do this with each crate here. It's just an example. I'm going to do this. And this is going to speed up your crate placement a lot. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We're just adding bolts here. We made one section, and let's just finish this off here. So add a smaller beam to finish this off, just like that. Add a few more bolts onto that. Now, instead of bolting, doing this forever, adding extra crates, what we can do is to speed up our crate building process. If we're making a cargo hauler, is we can select all of this, create a module like we've done before, and now the whole thing is a module. Now all we need to do if we want to make a big cargo carrier is it's already bolted to the beams already. All we would have to do is just copy paste this across our cargo carrier like that. Like this. If we're making a big cargo ship, we just copy paste this module that we just made that's already bolted. And all we'd have to do is just fit that, slap that on the ship somewhere and just weld the beams onto the ship and that's done. You have all these extra crates. So that's how you add crates quickly if you're building a big cargo crate um, mining ship or cargo hauler. You don't have to individually bolt everything. You only have to bolt it once or a few times and then you can just copy paste your saved module that already has the bolts placed. So that's just a fast way of doing it. If you want to build a big cargo carrier then that's how you do it. 
Okay, so in order to access our cargo crates, what they need is pipe. We need to add pipe into the cargo crates. You can add a cable into here as well, but um, I don't think you need cable for the uh, cargo crates. Just to be safe though, in case I'm missing something, we can add a cable as well. So let's put a cable and a pipe into the cargo crate. So we have cable and pipe going into these holes. So you need to put a cable and a pipe into just one of these holes here that are on the cargo crate. Let's add a cable here and a pipe here. Okay, done. They're both connected to the ship network. I put a cable and a pipe into them. Now, now that we've done that, these crates will have power. If we test, they'll have pipe and power, but we can't access them. Uh, there's no way of accessing these crates unless we have a resource bridge. So that's a device I'll show you. And just like most devices, if not all devices, we need to have a hard point first. So let's place a, a device hard point. Here we go. Let's grab this hard point. I'm just going to put it on the side here. Yeah, let's just flip it here. Let's put a hard point here. Let's bolt this to the beam. Okay, again, auto bolt. Bad job. We're going to do it ourselves. I'm just going to manually put some bolts on the seams here. See this? Nice way of bolting the hard point. Okay, I've connected the hard point myself with some bolts. Now we're going to attach the resource bridge device. Type in resource bridge. It's in the cargo section as well. So resource bridge. This is it. And what the resource bridge does, it allows us to access our cargo crates on the ship. So we auto bolt the resource bridge. And uh, same as usual, it just needs cable and pipe. And the resource bridge actually only needs pipe, but I'm just going to add a cable anyway, just in case. I'm missing something, I don't know. I'm a bit rusty. So we've got a cable and a pipe into the resource bridge, which is bolted to the hard point, which is bolted to the frame just like all our devices. And now, with the uh, cargo crates connected with pipe as well, if I go into the test mode and I want to access the inventory of the ship, all I have to do is face the resource bridge and press F. And it brings this up, just like you've probably already done before in the game. I'm sure you've used labor already. And now if I check my inventory, we're connected to the crates. Uh, the reason why we've got this uh, fake resource here in the crates already is because we used the virtual mass tool to create um, a fake heavy resource, just to, uh, just to um, simulate the heaviest weight. So that's just the virtual mass tool. It should be empty. So if I go off this again, and I go into the virtual mass tool, and I just uh, remove mass, apply to all, and then I'll go back into the test mode, into the resource bridge, as you can see, it's empty. So these are the empty containers of the ship. The two different containers of the ship were connected. So that's how you connect crates. And an important thing to note with cargo crates is you only have to connect one spot like this. With cargo crates, a bit like our triangle thrusters earlier, if we just, let's close this mass tool here. If we just attach more crates on like this, Okay, we just attach some more crates onto the sides. And again, we're going to manually do this ourselves. The auto bolt tool always puts too many bolts in. I don't like the auto bolt tool with the cargo crates. So I'm just going to manually put some in myself. Okay, so we've connected some extra crates, as you can see, onto the sides. And the thing about cargo is that they're just like uh, triangle thrusters, that if you connect another crate, another crate directly onto another one, if you fit it exactly on, like Lego, then it will work. So if we access the resource bridge, we now have four empty cargo slots. We have four crates, despite only this one being connected with cable and pipe, we can access this one as well, because it's attached directly onto this one, like Lego. Okay, so next up we're going to go over 
buttons. Yes, we will go over buttons and to demonstrate buttons, we're almost finished with this basic tutorial now, so to demonstrate buttons I'm going to create our first weapon. So we're going to have a weapon on the ship, on this tiny crappy ship that makes no sense, we're going to add a weapon. So if I go into my asset browser again, let's just type in cannon, let's just see what comes up when we type in cannon. You scroll down here, and we've got spaceship modules, spaceship module starter kit. Again, we've got pre-assembled modules by the developers. We don't even have to put this together. Let's find weapon fixed auto cannon, auto cannon fixed mount. Let's left click on that. Now we've got a, a pre-assembled weapon for us already. Let's just place that here. And just like our thrusters, our weapons are made out of several parts. They're made out of a, a barrel. Um, they're made out of a body, they're made out of a auto cannon structure, then you've got the ammo on the top here. Um, and that with weapons, we're not going to do that because this is a basic tutorial, but with weapons, you don't have to use these ammo magazines. You can actually find a weapon crate, ammo crate, sorry. If we type in ammo, we can find an ammo crate and we can use these ammo crates as well which are bolted together this is a basic tutorial so i'm not going to show you that but all that needs is a plug with pipe and cable and bolted together and you've got an ammo crate there or you can have ammo cartridges on the weapon themselves like this um, but all ammo cartridges and ammo crates no matter how you want to do it or go about it they all explode so you just have to be careful that the ammo in your ship is got a bit of a space away from the important parts of your ship because at all forms of ammo ammo storage in this game explodes <laughs> so just be careful if you're in combat and you're creating a fighter but you don't have your ammo close to anything important okay so we've got our basic auto cannon it's pre-assembled for us but it's made out of separate parts that you can find in the asset router browser just like the thrusters i'm not going to go through all of that now we're going to add a hard point because just like every device in starbase it has a hard point slot so we need to add a hard point to the bottom of it, just like this. Now we're just going to select all of it again, and we're just going to auto bolt it. Great, now that we've auto bolted it, just like I always do, we're going to select it all again. And we're going to detach the module, and now we're going to create module again. So now it's a new module with all the bolts and the hard point. I just have to select the green dot. And I'm going to use the movement tool and I'm just going to move it on the ship somewhere. Do I have space for a cannon anywhere on the ship? Okay, this is a bit random, but I'm just going to put the ca cannon on the right here. So it's on the right of my seat here. And I'm just going to auto bolt it onto the beams here just to be quick. Let's check the durability. Durability is okay, it's all green. Great. <clears throat> And we can also find a cannon mirror. So if I go type in cannon, let's have a look here in the weapons again. We have auto cannon fixed mount mirror in brackets. So that's just a mirrored version. There we go. I can have a mirrored version on the other side. Let's copy the hard points because we need to put a hard point back on. Okay, let's snap a hard point onto the mirrored gun. Let's auto bolt that as well. Let's select all again, detach, create, it's the module again, and we'll put this on the other side here. So we have two guns symmetrical on the ship, on either side. Alright, look at this bad boy. Okay, so let's auto bolt, auto bolt this on. Let's check our durability tool. Okay, for some reason the auto bolt didn't do a very good job, happens. Let's left click on this. We left click on it it says at least one more bolt is needed in this area roughly not sure where that is i'll just put a bolt there great green it's working now okay so now we have two auto cannons with hard points connected on the top of our ship now we're going to plug them in so the hard point there let's plug it in oh and one quick tip guys <clears throat> we could just use the cable from our main ship network and and, uh, and just plug it in. But also with hardpoint and a lot of devices in the game, you can actually put a plug in one end and take a plug out the other end like this. 
Let's take a pipe out the other end. And a bit like ducts, with hard points and some devices in the game, you can actually just take a, a cable and a pipe out the other end, and it will still work. It will still be connected to the main ship network. So that we can do that. And I'll just take a, a cable and a pipe out of this hard point, connect it up. There we go. Okay, so now we have two weapons connected. Let's test it. Check our universal tool. Yeah, it's connected. It's connected. It's all good. Done. We have extra weapons. So let's see how they work. Okay, so once you've got your weapons connected and attached any way you want, we're going to learn how to fire these weapons. So this is how we're going to learn how to use buttons in the game. So just like our progress bars, when we add buttons to our control panel here, we go into our search menu and we devices, controls, and we're going to look for any form of button. It doesn't even matter. You could even fire with a lever if you wanted to. Um, we're going to go for a hybrid button. That's uh, a good button to use. So let's have a look. Where's the hybrid button? There it is. Hybrid button. We'll use a hybrid button. It's just a nice big button with text. We're going to flip it around until it's the right way around. We're going to place it here. Okay, we're going to select it. We're going to auto bolt it. Maybe add an extra one ourselves. Okay, so button state. That's the, uh, the name of whatever it is we want to activate. Okay, so we're going to check our weapon here. <clears throat> so our weapon here, we need to find out what's the value on the weapon that fires the gun. So let's just click on the body here. What does the body do? It just stores heat, it's not that. Let's click on the barrel here. Left click on it. Okay, so when I left clicked on the weapon barrel, I found this in the, in the properties. Mounted weapon fire zero. So with most devices on Starbase, whether it's a light or a lamp or any simple device, zero means off and one means on with most simple devices. And with the weapon, zero is off and one is on. So <clears throat> just to give you an example, if I go into the test mode here, I face that weapon barrel, I press the U key to open up, the, oops, and I press the U key to open up the universal tool. And here, weapon fire in the properties again. If we change this from 0 to 1, it should fire. Any day now. There we go, it's firing. Okay, <clears throat> so one thing to note, the reason why it took a long time to fire when I pressed to turn it on <clears throat> is because in the designer, generally, let me just turn this off here, so let's select it and then put it back to zero, and we turned it off. Okay, so the reason it took so long to fire is because in the designer, well, when you enter the test mode, um, sometimes the thrusters and the weapons and things, they just take a while to turn on. It's just some coding thing, I don't know. So when you t whenever you test a ship, you know, don't immediately quit out if something's not working. Just give it a little bit of time, because sometimes in the test mode, it just takes a bit of time for the devices to turn on for some reason. Okay, so the gun is working, but it's not firing very quickly, and that's just because we don't have much power on the ship. We don't have much cooling. You know, the ship is too small to carry two big weapons. It doesn't have enough cooling. It doesn't have enough generators. This is just to demonstrate. Okay, so mounted weapon fire, we turn that to 1 from the universal tool and that turned it on. So what we can do is, I can rename this, I'm going to make this a shorter name just to be easier. Instead of mounted weapon fire, I'm going to call it just fire. Okay, so now this weapon is just called fire. I'm going to select the other barrel of the other weapon, same thing. I'm going to call this value fire. I'm going to copy the value fire. I'm going to go over to our button. This is how buttons work. Left click on the button. Button state, that's the name of the button. I'm going to change it to fire. So I've changed the button state to fire. Now when I press this button, it'll operate this fire. And with buttons, <clears throat> if we check the button properties, button on state value, that's the value that it will be when it's on, is 1 button off off state value that's the value that this button will input when it's off will be zero so when this button is off it will be zero and when it's on it will be one 
and uh, button style. That's if do you want the button to be a, a holding button or a toggle button. So zero is just for you have to hold the button down to shoot. If I change that to one, now button style one is a toggle button. So I just have to press it, the button once and it will stay on. So that's a toggle button. So if we go into the test mode now, we have to wait a little bit of time for the generators to warm up. And um, because the weapons use up a lot of power and the ship doesn't have much. But now that this fire button has the same name as the mounted weapon fire, we renamed them to the same name. When I press this button, the on state value will read 1, which will be 1 for this barrel, and it should turn it on. So let's just press the button. There we go. It shoots the weapon. I turn it off. It's no longer shooting. I turn it on, and it shoots. And the reason why it has an inconsistent fire rate, that's got nothing to do with anything that we just did. That's just because the ship is doesn't have enough cooling and it doesn't have enough power to power two big weapons. Because we're just demonstrating on this tiny little ship that only has two generators. Okay, so that's how weapon devices work. We just rename the button. We rename the button to have the same name as the device that we want to operate, which in this case is the fire button, the, the barrel fire variable. And when we press the button, it will change this value to 1, because it has the same name. So let's press the button, it changed it to 1, we turn it off, it changes it to 0. Because that's what the value on state value is for the button. See on the button, the on state value is 1, off state value is 0. And that's what it will tell this barrel to do. So that's how devices work. Simple. We just rename the button to be the same name as the device that we want to operate in summary. And um, most devices in the game, like I said before, they just have a zero for, for uh, the value of zero just means it's off and the value of one just means it's on. So all we have to do on the button <clears throat> is just make sure that the on state value of the button when it's on is one and the off state value of the button when it's off is zero. And ideally, I usually make the button style 1, because button style 1 just makes it a toggle button, so you just press it once and it stays on. But by default it's 0, and 0 just means that you have to hold the button down to do whatever it is you want to do. So that's how buttons work in Starbase. You have buttons, you have progress bars, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so we have our weapons set up and buttons, but I almost forgot something very important, and that's batteries. So batteries is uh, another important ship part, but you can fly a ship without batteries, but ideally every ship should have batteries. And So if we go into um, our search asset browser and we type in batteries, we'll find it in machinery and power. We'll find a small rechargeable battery. We click on that, we place that down, and we're going to want a few of these. We're going to want maybe two at least for a small ship, and um, a medium, well, any ship really, you want to have a lot more than two, maybe six for a small ship, um, depending on what you've got. If you've got weapons and things, or mining lasers, then you want to have at least six on a small ship, and if you've got something a bit bigger, then you'll want at least 20 for a, a big ship, I would say. Okay, so what are batteries? Batteries store power, so any excess power generated by the generators, uh, it won't just be for nothing. Um, any power that the generators generates that isn't being used will be stored in the batteries. And the batteries have a max stored power um, of 10,000, and um, if you want more maximum stored power, then you just have more batteries. Simple as that. And, and batteries work um, a bit like cargo crates. Um, batteries, you only have to plug one in, and if you have multiple batteries connected side by side or on top of each other, then they will all receive power. So, yeah, so that's how batteries work. So, we're going to set up some batteries here. We're going to put one on either end of the ship. So, let's grab one here. We'll see if we can tuck a battery into our ship here. Oh, and one more thing, batteries do explode. They have a small explosion. I'll just auto bolt that, that'll do. Batteries have a small explosion, so if they get shot or destroyed in any way, they'll create a small explosion that can really damage your ship, and especially if they're close to your fuel tanks. 
so this is very poor placement for a battery if you're building a PvP ship you do not want batteries like here inside next to your generators and stuff because they're explosive um, so yeah we've just placed two batteries down so we plug both batteries in they're both bolted that's it that's all we need to do now our ship will have power from the batteries and um, if we want to be able to read how much power the ship has stored we need to find the stored battery power variable here as you can see I'm going to rename this because it's a very long name let's just call it power so it's just going to call power now so stored battery power same again on this other battery I'm just going to rename it to just power it has a maximum of 10,000 and that will read every battery you don't need to include multiple batteries that will read every battery and I'll just copy the progress bar real quick of the ammo I'm just going to copy it and just paste another progress bar does it fit on? it's not really snapping very well I'm going to turn the snap tool off and I'm just going to manually drag it a bit closer because the snap tool doesn't do a good job sometimes ok I'm going to turn it back on I'm going to auto bolt this we're going to rename this to power so it's the same as the batteries that we just renamed and the max value again remember it's going to be 10,000 so it's the same as the max value of the battery power okay so we've got that now uh, that should read the battery so if we go into our test mode we check here it's reading 10,000 that's our battery power and if we do something that uses power so thrusters use a bit of power weapons use a bit of power so if I press fire or I move the ship around Let's wait for it to load. I've got the wrong setup here, two seconds. So if I move around, can you see that? The power keeps going down, but it keeps recharging back to full power because our generators are 100% and that seems to be enough power. You also might have noticed that my auto cannons are working consistently now because auto cannons. Um, or oh, any weapons on a ship, they really require a couple of batteries in order to operate at full power. I'm not sure what it is, but um, having batteries store your power just enables your weapons to fire better as well. So batteries are essential, really. They store excess power on the ship, so any excess power that you don't need will be stored on the, in the power progress bar that we just made. And... Um, Let's say you've got uh, a high electricity machine on your ship or you've got a high electricity weapon and you and you can only fire it a few times and then you need to recharge but you don't want your whole ship shutting, uh, shutting down from lack of power then that's a very good use for batteries and just in general everything works better when you have batteries you need batteries to power weapons and you need batteries to store any excess power and if you don't have batteries generally any ship that's has weapons or that's small to medium sized or bigger will not function properly so that's an important thing that I almost forgot make sure you have batteries okay and the last quick thing that we forgot is the transceiver the transceiver uh, receives station signals I believe um, I don't think you have to have this on your ship I, I have had a ship before where I forgot to put a transceiver on and I was still able to read station signals so I'm not sure exactly how it works maybe it just uh, boosts it I think um, I'm not an expert, but anyway, this is kind of an essential so you want to put one of these on your ship as well and this sits on top of a hard point, so put a hard point on your ship get a transceiver, put the transceiver on your ship and bolt it on and if it doesn't want to bolt then you just have to manually bolt it on yourself just like so onto the hard point and if we go underneath make sure you cable it, transceiver only needs a cable, it's just a device it doesn't need a uh, pipe okay so we have a transceiver and then next the next important thing is our transponder so a transponder is our communicator so um, people can see our name tags when our transponder is on if we don't have a transponder we have no name tag uh, and I think a ship has to have a transponder so we're just gonna go type in transponder and uh, devices navigation ship transponder we select that Okay, so the receiver, we put the receiver on. And I'm just going to bolt it directly on top of this just for convenience, but it doesn't have to go on top. I'm just, you can put it anywhere. You can put the receiver over here if you want to. 
Just put it anywhere on your ship, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it on top of the FCU here. I'm just going to bolt it on. And now I'm just going to get a cable from the FCU. <clears throat> as long as they're on the same, it has nothing to do with the FCU. But as long as I have a cable connected to the same ship network, then it will receive power. Okay, so the transponder has power now. And I have a receiver so I can receive station signals and a transponder so I have a name tag that people can read when it's on. Uh, next we're going to make a button to turn our transponder on and off because if you notice when you're flying around in the game you'll notice people have name tags and some people don't have name tags um, and that's because they turn their transponder off and on. So we want to copy this variable here, transponder active, that's the button to turn it on, 0 is off, 1 is on and we're, it's on by default. We're going to make a new button here. I'm just going to copy the fire button, auto bolt the new button. The new button, it's going to be button style. It's going to be a toggle button. So that's one for a toggle buttons. And we're going to rename the button to transponder active. So that's the same now as the transponder active here. You can also shorten that or change the name. Uh, we're not going to bother with this one. So now if I go into test mode, it's on by default, but if I turn it off, we won't have a transponder, players won't be able to see us, and those pesky pirates won't notice us when we're flying around. But if we have our transponder on, we can't see it in the test mode, but we'll have a name tag visible that anyone can see, so pirates will target you if there are any around. Um, so yeah, so don't forget about the transponder, that's very important, you have to turn it on and off, depending on the situation. Okay, so the last thing I want to cover before we stop the video, well, it's two things actually. It's um, armor, materials, and how to buy your ship once you've built your ship. So we're going to start with armor. So this is just another basic thing. If you're building a ship and you want it to actually survive a few shots, then you're going to have to put some armor around it. And you can find armor in the plates section, and that's what armor is. It's called plates. So you have all these different type of plates and plate shapes. Um, generally, the rule in Starbase is the heavier the plate is, the more shots it can take before it breaks. So I'm going to take the 144 by 144 here. Let's see if I can fit that on the side, just to demonstrate. I just place the plate down. If we left click on our plate, we can see the weight of it. It's 2478 kg. So each plate has its own weight and uh, generally in Starbase if you don't know how good a plate is generally the bigger plates have more armor they have more HP they take more shots before getting destroyed and uh, when plates do get destroyed when they get shot at or damaged um, they break and when they break um, from that point onwards uh, bullets and uh, projectiles pass through them very easily and um, can destroy the inside. So once they break, they lose their magic HP, if you could say. Um, but some, I'm not going to get too advanced into the mechanics, but there are certain materials and uh, plates that actually, once they are destroyed, they still provide a little bit of voxel armor. So it's, it still provides a little bit of shelter for, for weapons penetrating them. But uh, I'm not an expert on this, and I'm not going to go into extreme detail. All you have to know is the heavier the plate, the heavier, the better the armor, really, basically. Okay, so we're going to plate, add a plate on here, just to show you some armor. So when you want to add armor onto your ship, you generally want to bolt your armor onto your ship. So this is just a bad example here. You generally want to add your bolts as close to the plate as you can. Okay, so if I want to bolt this plate on, I could bolt it from here. So if we check our durability tool, that seems to be enough bolts. Or we could bolt it directly from the inseam here of the beam, see? And another thing with uh, bolting is if you, it's not just the amount of bolts that count, it's how spread out the bolts are. See, if I put two bolts here very close, it's red. If I put two bolts and I spread them out a little bit, it's green, it's now good. And also when you're plating or you're adding any important parts to your ship and you're expecting to come under fire, you always want to add a couple of extra bolts. So I'm going to add four. I'm not just going to have two. I'm going to have four here, even though I only need two. The reason that is, is because some weapons in Starbase 
do damage, uh, ex uh, AOE damage, area of effects damage, that can actually remove your bolts. Or maybe one part of your beam just gets destroyed and the other one's still connected. So generally, if you're building a PvP ship, you want to have a couple of extra bolts for your plates. Okay, and the extra advantage of bolting as close to the plate as you can is another quick tip. If I create a copy of this plate, almost every PvP in a ship in the game has layers of plates. So if I make copy the plate here, and now I have three plates all side by side in front of one another, we can actually bolt all these plates to the beam here with just one bolt. So if I just put one bolt in here, even though it, one bolt is enough, you can see it connect. It, the bolt has gone through all three of the plates. Okay, if I zoom the camera in so I can see inside here, the bolt is going through all three of the plates. So that's an easy way to bolt extra armor onto your ship, is to bolt through the inseam of your beam, like here, bolt as close as you can. If you bolt really closely with your, with your bolts, it, the bolt can actually travel through multiple layers of plates. So you can stick multiple layers of plates with just one bolt. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add some extra bolts here. Now we've got four bolts to bolt four, three layers of armor. Um, I think three layers, maybe four layers is the limit of how much a bolt can travel through, but that should do it. And if we really wanted to add even more layers of armor, we could also just bolt the armor directly on top of the existing armor, like here, from the outside. Okay, if we really wanted that extra bit of armor. So that's just a bit of armor tip. Okay, so next up we're going to go over materials. So you can change the material that your ship is made out of, um, or just the beams and the plates, that is. You can't change the material of anything else, it's just the beams and the plates. So the beams of the, and the plates of your ship can have a different material, and all materials have their own specialties and differences. So let's go over that. On the top left, we open the materials tab by left clicking on that. Uh, we'll get this materials tab here somewhere on your screen. And you can select metals or alloys. Alloys are just more expensive fusions of materials that you'll look and learn about another time. We're just going to pick metals, we're going to have a look. As you can see here, we've got all the ores, we've got bastium, we've got terodium, uh, all the ores that you see in the game. Uh, that, and we select any one of these. I'm going to select Bastion. Cause, and if we have a look here, as soon as we pick any one of these materials, you'll see that the whole ship has kind of just changed color here. Just the beams and the plates, that is. Uh, and that's to indicate uh, what the material is. So by default, this dark brown color that everything seems to be is Bastion. <coughs> Excuse me. It's Bastion. And um, by default, uh, every beam you place, every plate you place when you using the designer will just be by default Bastion until you change the material in the material section. So if I select Terodium for instance and I left click on either a beam or a plate, I've just changed the material from Bastion to Terodium which is this bright red color. Okay, another way we can check the material is to just go onto our select tool, left click on anything, any beam or any plate, and we can also read above the weight the material. So this is Bastion, I left click on this. Now this is Terodium, which we just made. Same with this plate, this is Terodium that we just clicked on. So that's how you change the materials. You select the material, you left click on what you want to change. Okay, so here's the differences between the materials in Starbase. So by default, everything is Bastion, like I said, um, but every material has different qualities to them. Uh, we're going to read them out here. So if we look up, highlight the Bastion, you can see at the bottom, it says armor value 0 0.75, structure durability is 80, and the density is 9.95 kg. Corrosion resistance, you don't have to worry about that as of the making of this video, that is, because that hasn't been implemented yet. So what is armor value? Pretty self-explanatory. Armor value is how many shots it can take before it breaks. So for instance, um, this plate will take a certain amount of hits before it breaks, uh, which I kind of explained earlier, and um, that's the armor value. Um, if we have a, something with more armor, so if we go to Terodium, Terodium has 3.7 armor value. That's five times Bastion, I think. 
Okay, and so that means if we made this plate out, if we made all these plates out of trodium, this would take five times as many shots from weapons to break as the Bastion. It has way more armor than Bastion. Uh, and generally, for beginner ships, I would just use Bastion and Trodium to make your ships because they are very good, basic, cheap materials for beginners. Trodium for your armor and Bastion for your beams. Okay, so if we look at structure durability, why would we want to use Bastion over Trodium since Trodium is so great with the high armor value? Well, if we look at structure durability, Trodium is 60 and Bastion is 80. In addition to that, Trodium weighs a third more. It's 15 kg per kV or whatever that means, but Bastion only weighs 9.95 kg. <clears throat> and basically what structural durability is, is how much weight it can carry before it, the part breaks or it becomes unstable. So if we were to put a ridiculous amount of weight on one of these beams, let's say we just bolted a ton of plates onto one of our beams, if that beam was made out of terodium, it would start to break eventually. If we, but if it was bastium, it would last a bit longer because it has 80 structural durability. It would last longer before it breaks. So generally speaking, you want the beams of your ship to be made out of bastium because that can carry more weight than terodium. And you want the armor of your ship to be made out of terodium because that can be heavier and that will give you much more armor. Uh, just to give you an example, if we look at the durability tool, it's all fine. It's green because this beam, which the armor is connected to, is fine. But if we were to change this from Bastion to, let's say, Arcanium, which only has 20 structural durability, that's only a quarter of Bastion. Let's, let's use this just as an example, over the top example. Now you can see when I change the material to Arcanium, it's red and it has, a, it has a durability problem. Let's have a look at this. With the durability tool it says the frame section is not strong enough. Okay. Uh, what we could do is we could add more beams, more pillars, and we could bolt from the pillars to redistribute the weight better so that there isn't so much stress on this red beam here. Or we can just use a material that has a higher structural durability. So Arcanium has terrible structural durability. If we made it Bastion, even Trodium would be good enough. Then it will be green, see? So that's the difference. Um, structural durability is how much weight it can carry before it becomes under stress and starts breaking apart. You don't want your beams to be under too much stress from loads of weight attached. So increase the structural, use high structural durability uh, materials for your beams, which is Bastion, that's a good be beginner material. And Trodium, it doesn't have quite as much structural durability and it weighs more, making your ship slower and more unstable. But um, it gives you a ton of armor, so generally speaking, you want to use Trodium for your plates as a beginner. Uh, you also have a bunch of other materials, you've got Ageism at the top here, and Ageism is actually a good in-betweener. It's got 1.75, it's nowhere near as much as Trodium. But it doesn't weigh as much. It's only 9.67. It's a very light material. So that could help you a lot as well if you're making a light ship. So there's all these different materials. They all have their own specialties. Some of them are almost useless when it comes to armor and plates and beams. Um, and some of them are way more expensive, but they have even higher structural durability or armor. So there's a lot of materials to look at in the game. But basically, if you're a beginner, just use Trodium for armor or Ageism. And... Um, Bastion for beams. So that's it, that's how the materials work in the game and lastly we're going to go over how to buy your ship and how to check what materials you need to buy your ship. Okay finally, so save your ship. If you made it this far, well done. This is a long video I know, but uh, we're almost finished. So save your ship, uh, make sure it's saved and then what else we can do is, uh, before we stop, I just wanted to mention that you can also open other pre-made blueprints. So maybe you want to get an idea of some other ships if we press that. And we can just look at all of these pre-made ships that have already been made. Um, let's just pick any one we want. Uh, I don't know, the Vector Shuttle. I'll left click on that. It just opened a pre-made ship here. Uh, and you can play around with this ship. You can enter the test mode. 
you can punch it, you can break it if you want, doesn't matter. Um, as long as you don't use your inventory, because your inventory actually gets used. But other than that, everything else you can do. And uh, we can have a look at other people's ships. We can play around, like press buttons. Oh, fancy door, look at that. Got generators in the back. I can sit in here. I can press any button I want, fly around, do whatever you want. Destroy it if you want to. Let's just blow this up. Hey, so you can do anything you want in the designer. There's no repercussions, just as long as you don't use your actual inventory, like shooting your rifle, because that actually will use your arm ammo in the real game. But everything else will not affect your anything. So, so yeah, the test is a great test designer is a great place to just test your ships and have fun and have a look at other pre-made ships um, if you want some inspiration. So we're going to go back to our ship, our basic ship, reload that. So first off, uh, if you want to buy our ship, we need to have the materials for it, and we need to have the money for it. So if we go into our building budget here, uh, we can see the budget of how much, sp uh, how big our ship can be. So our ship is isn't that big at all. Um, we our ship has room to be over 100 times the size that it is, as you can see here, and um, yeah, it's not big at all. You can make a very big ship in Starbase, you don't have to worry about this at all, unless you're going for a gigantic ship. Um, and you have limits, such as how many weapons you can have, you have all these limits, you can only have one transponder, um, you have a limit of cables, pipes and ducts, so in the future ships, if you're making them very, very big, you might want to try and conserve these things by using ducts and uh, things like that, heat sinks. So you've got all these little things that you can check, uh, and the cost of it, roughly. Um, and when you want to buy your ship, so when you want to buy your ship, if I go into, it, ha it has to be saved first, but once you're ready to buy your ship, before that you just want to check a couple of safety checks, just click on this, show detached objects. You want to check if there's any detached objects, because if there are any objects floating around that aren't connected to your ship, it will show up in a detached object section once that is selected. I'll just give you an example here, I'll just copy a random object here and you'll see it's highlighted red. Uh, you'll see that with the detached objects it will highlight everything that's detached and not connected properly in red and you can quickly go in, attach it, delete it, whatever. So you need to do that before you buy a ship, make sure it's all connected. And additionally, you need to check if there's any overlapping errors. Sometimes you can't buy your ship because there's an overlapping error. You can check that quickly by opening your settings, going into Spaceship Designer, and uh, scrolling down until you find Highlight Overlapping Objects. You can check that box. Just have a look if there's anything overlapping. And if anything is overlapping, I'll just give you an example here, I'll just move move this in a bit so it's clipping through the object, it will show up red. So that's an overlapping error. Sometimes if objects are a bit too close to each other, like they're clipping through a little bit, they'll be red and they'll prevent you from building your ship. It's something you'll only experience if you're an advanced builder, but I'm showing you this now because this catches a lot of people off guard later. So just make sure you check for overlapping errors if you can't buy your ship. Okay, and once you're done, go back to the spaceship designer settings and turn that off because that affects your performance, you don't want it on all the time. So there are the few troubleshooting things that you should check before you buy a ship and if it's all good go to file and go to save, make sure it's saved and press to buy custom spaceship so you can now buy your ship. Okay so ship name the price, that's how much it's going to cost, 114000 that's mostly because of the weapons. Um, and you can just press yes to buy, or no, not to buy. And um, here it lists the materials that you need, these are the materials required to build the ship. I need one stack of ageism, I need 3.2 stacks of bastium, and so on and so on. Uh, these are the stacks you have available in your station inventory. All the origin stations have a shared inventory, but if you're somewhere else, like you're on the moon or something, you're going to have a separate station inventory, depending on the station that you're at. Okay, and this is the total cost here. Uh, we can reduce this cost 
okay, by adding parts to our station. So by default, it will use parts in the station storage to build the ship. So if I've got auto cannons and generators, and I've got a bunch of parts in my station storage, it will use those parts to build the ship. And if I don't have those parts, I can still build the ship anyway. That's the beauty of the Starbase Designer is it will print the parts that you are missing, even if you haven't researched them, even if you don't own those parts, it will print those parts for you as long as you have the required ores to build those parts and you pay an extra fee. It costs a lot more to build a ship if you're missing parts um, than if you own the parts in your station. So that's the price to pay. Um, but you know, if you're a beginner and you don't want to, and you haven't researched a lot of things, and you're making, and you've got some fancy machines on your ship that you haven't even researched yet, um, what you could do is you could just buy the materials on the auction, and you can just print it from the designer as long as you have the cash. So that's it. You just need to have the ores needed, and you just have to have the money needed. And if you want to reduce the cost of the build, just make the parts and store them in your station already. Uh, that would reduce the cost of your ship. So once you're done and you're ready to buy your ship, you just press yes and it will load and it will buy your ship. And here we are, my ship has been bought, the transponder is on and it's ready to fly out. So that's it, that's how you build a ship in Starbase. I hope you enjoyed, well I hope you learned something let's say. Um, it's not very enjoyable, is it? And uh, come back to this video if you get stuck, find the bookmarks. We're only just scratching the surface, there's so much more to do. There's moving parts, there's the YOLO script language, uh, which is actually a simplified script language made just for Starbase, um, that you, and you don't even have to be a programmer. And it allows you to automate devices and make some really crazy stuff. Uh, I've made a lot of interesting things and I don't have any programming uh, experience. Um, I just learnt YOLO in a weekend, so that's something really cool and I do have a tutorial on that as well. Uh, check out my advanced guides if you want to build a much more advanced spaceship and you've gotten used to all the beginner stuff already. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.